This is like an Ashanti song, girl. You just say baby, baby, baby the whole time because it's going to be delicious. You're awful when you know when you say things in front of everybody. That's just going to get me to get super giggly and nerdy. And they're going to get mad at us for giggling, but we like to giggle. <laughs> I do giggle a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. It's something we struggled with as children. Yeah, I giggle a lot now because I no longer cry. I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't cry that often anymore. Mm -hmm. But you do, you do have some lipstick right under your That's chin. okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm. Wow. That is some good stuff. I'm going to be honest with you. The most difficult part of this recipe is going to be waiting because it can take you anywhere from three and a half to four hours. But let me tell you, once this process is done, you're gonna come back for more. And don't forget to wash down these tacos with our refreshing Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so good. What I love about making this recipe is the aromatics. When you walk into your kitchen, it's like a kitchen potpourri. And once it goes into the oven, I don't know if you're like me, I could smell it within 30 minutes and I just couldn't resist. So I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of these tacos. Mmm. Mmm. You enjoy yourself, we're not in a hurry. Yeah. If you are asking for this uh, in Mexico or anywhere, it's not going to happen. You guys know that I bring you views, original recipes, and combinations, and I'm just out there like that. <laughs> Thank you guys for loving me. Thank you for being <laughs> out there. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I make bistec borracho, and this recipe is excellent for a weekday meal. You'll need one pound of beef steak. Today I'm using tender sliced beef chuck and some of you might know it as bistec. One beer, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, three garlic cloves, a small bunch of cilantro, one onion, two tomatoes, one roasted red bell pepper, one roasted poblano, one jalapeño, one cup of water and combined with one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and a little bit of oil. To your bowl, you wanna add your thinly sliced beef, Next, you wanna add your seasonings, which are black pepper, salt, ground cumin. We're gonna follow that by adding our chopped garlic and chopped cilantro. Sprinkle in your sliced onion and douse it with your beer. And make sure to save some for yourself because you deserve it. Combine all your ingredients and set it to the side for 10 minutes while you start on your rice and your beans. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. The beef has been marinating for about 10 minutes. You can leave it anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, the longer the better, but we're moving quickly here today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place it on our hot pan and we're gonna sear it on each side for one minute. It smells so good. It smells like my uncle in here. <laughs> and after two minutes, you're gonna remove your cooked beef. We're not done with it. We're just gonna set this to the side. And once you're done cooking your beef, uh, you're gonna notice that your pan has a little bit of uh, the delicious flavoring at the bottom, and you're gonna add your tomatoes. Mmm, that smells so good. We're gonna continue by cooking our tomatoes for two more minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna add your beef. Your peppers. Add your chicken broth mixture. Your borracho marinade. Woo, look at that deliciousness. It's a party in the pan. Give that a good mix and make sure that you're getting all that delicious flavor from the bottom of your pan to incorporate into this delicious broth. I'm currently on a medium heat and I'm gonna keep it this way for another 15 minutes. If for some reason your pan gets too hot, go ahead and move that to a medium low. 
After 15 minutes, your bistec borracha is gonna look just like this. If you want your sauce a little bit thicker, you can continue to cook on a medium low for another five to eight minutes, but this is absolutely perfect and exactly what our family loves. I don't mean to, you know, ruin the fun here, but I've tasted this broth about five times and I just wanted to have it in a bowl with soup and that's it. It's that good. And boom, done. Just like that, you have an easy weekday meal. One of the things that I am gonna to say to you is that depending on the cut of beef that you're using, you might need to cook it for 25 to 30 minutes or you can get away with anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. It really depends on how thin you slice your beef. Mmm, wow. Yeah, the broth is amazing in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a party in my mouth. <laughs> Especially with the roasted peppers, so, so good. Yummy. Well, I need to warm up a tortilla so that I can finish this plate. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we want to give a special shout out to the Views Club because without you, we wouldn't be here. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Amigos, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make chilaquiles verdes. Whether you like them spicy or you like them mild or you don't like spice at all, not to worry, I have you covered. I have a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. Just click that title, it'll expand the description area and you'll get all the details you need. But one of the things that you have to have for this recipe is corn tortillas. So get a big stack like this of corn tortillas. And what you wanna do with your corn tortillas is you wanna slice them into smaller triangles. And what I'm hoping is that most of your corn tortillas look like this and not to worry. If for some reason you have those fall apart tortillas, it ends up like this or even like this, you can still get this recipe done. You're gonna need some oil, but I suggest that for your oil, you make it comfortable for your home. Today, I'm gonna be frying with peanut oil. We are also gonna need some tomatillos. When you're choosing your tomatillos, you wanna make sure to go for the medium or the small ones. Now, it does come with a layer of a thick leaf over it. I'm not sure what that's called, but I suggest you take it off and wash them so that they're not so sticky. And we want them nice and clean. You'll need some fresh cilantro, a poblano pepper, and for your spice, you wanna use serrano. Now, I'm keeping this mildish spicy, so I'm using two, but if you want it extra spicy, use four. Now, for those of you that like a mild spice, go ahead and use jalapenos, and if you don't want any spice, just omit the serranos and the jalapenos. You're gonna need half a onion and two garlic cloves. In this cup, I have one and a half cups of warm water and I added one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. Now, if you don't wanna use chicken bouillon and you happen to have fresh chicken broth, use that or you can use salt. You're gonna need some queso fresco, crema fresca, and Cloud and I absolutely love this one. Ooh, it's our favorite it brand. Just, it reminds me of being in Mexico with my tias. Yes. I even pour it in my coffee. You know, I tried that and it was absolutely amazing because I usually go with heavy whipping cream, but this, I recommend it. It's so if you guys see the, right? It really is. If you see the bigger bottle, go for it. But I, I don't know. This one's really cute. I like this one. Me too. I like to reuse it. And some fancy mozzarella cheese. For those of you here in the States that love that cheese pool, you're going to need some of this. I'm just sitting back here trying not to laugh because it, it seems like a, a dating commercial, but it's not because your love for H-E-B is so deep you know and romantic <laughs> it really it, it really does get deep and personal with heb and myself and i don't know i i check cloud's grocery list when i go over there too and i i look at which i'm like where did you get this she's like it's the heb and i'm like what i didn't know about it it's a heb brand it's a heb brand not a sponsored video but we would be happy to be sponsored by heb yeah i would like that too let them know everybody let's do it you guys ready to cook we're ready all right to your pot of hot water, you want to add your tomatillos. I wanted to throw one in here, but I didn't want it to splash you. What? You should have done it. Yeah, it's going to splash you. <laughs> I don't want okay. it to mess up your equipment you with hot my, water. Your cheap equipment. Your cheap equipment, girl. <laughs> add your jalapenos and your serranos. And just take the stems off. And since we're going to be boiling our onion and our garlic, we'll only have to cook our sauce for about 10 to 15 minutes. 
instead of about 20 to 30 and then it'll be there for a while this is quick and easy at meals so, so go ahead kind of <laughs> go ahead and continue to boil this for 10 minutes I have my burner on a medium heat and we are going to roast our poblano pepper until it's nice and charred. You want to keep it nice and dark. It's going to make it easier for us to peel. You guys have seen me roast chiles on here plenty of times. This is no different. I'm going to peel it, remove the seeds, and boom, done. That's right. And if people love to watch you roast peppers, there is a video of roasting peppers for a good 30 minutes. That's is the that mango, the mango salsa? The mango yeah. salsa a few years back. You guys love watching roasting. Watch the mango salsa and make it. That is an award-winning salsa. I don't know how many of you have been sleeping on it and why, but you'll never ever in your life have a salsa that is so delicious like that one. And I would love to take credit, but that's my mom's hard work. Yes, we always get compliments when we take it to a little fiesta or a gathering. Yep, this is not a chop your jalapenos in your in your mango salsa this is like a really gourmet it's fancy serious. salsa that you can have it at your uh get together or you can take it to a fancy place it's it really serious can. business it really is i peeled and removed the seeds from our poblano and i'm just going to add that into the blender go ahead and take all of your ingredients that we boiled and place them into your blender add your chicken broth You know what had me cracking up the other day? What? The comments of our bolis recipe. Oh, what were they? Because I know the kids are watching the Beast Club Junior, so I always have the silliest faces for them because I love kids. So, sorry you guys caught me in between hanging out with children. <laughs> Anything for the Beast Club Junior. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love you. Aquino, we love you, sweetheart. I mean, we would do anything. If the Beast Club Junior suggested that we have a meetup just for them, we would make it happen. If you guys want us to have a meetup, make sure that it's for the Views Club Junior. It's going to be a fun time for the kids. Parents, we love you too, but the Views Club Junior will get us to do anything they want. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to blend until smooth. I got so excited to talk about the Views Club Junior that I forgot to add our cilantro. Isn't that wild? No, that's perfect. <laughs> perfect timing. So make sure you blend your cilantro in here. You don't forget. But if you have cute kids at home, it's okay. You know, we won't mess up the recipe. Just make sure to add it in here. And now we blend till smooth. <laughs> and boom, done. I have my pan on a medium heat and I let it warm up for two minutes. Now I'm gonna add my avocado oil and I'm just gonna add a little bit because I want this sauce to be nice and shiny. Go ahead and add your blended ingredients. Woo, yeah. Oh, fiesta. I'm gonna say pachanga, pero. <laughs> the cuerpo pide salsa, mija. Yes. <laughs> All the time. I'm grateful for the salsa you gave this morning. You like it? Uh -huh. Yummy. Yeah. Está perrona. And the taquitos. Ooh, ooh. And the chipitas. <laughs> and the chipitas. Yummy. I've been feeding everybody I can. And I'm excited to feed you guys today. Even people walking down your neighborhood. <laughs> I am. Are I'm you hungry? Did you eat? Anything gets delivered. Do you want something to eat? Here you go. We're gonna continue to cook this for 10 minutes, okay? We're gonna put this on a on a low heat and just come in and stir periodically if you're chit-chatting, you know, just give it a good little twirl in there. And someone's gonna say you're using a little pan again, but this is actually a big pan. It is, I think it's big. It's but very I would agree, steep. But I it's would agree steep. with that person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, I'll see you in 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we have a deliciously cooked thicker sauce and if you're wondering how did the sauce get so thick it's a tomatillo if you end up saving some of the sauce for later in the week for meal prep and you see that it's kind of stiff and jiggly not to worry all you have to do is warm it up and you get a smooth consistency all over again add your oil to your pot where you're gonna be frying your corn chips today I am using peanut oil did I already tell you guys that you did Thank you guys you. I'm aging right before your eyes so after about three to four minutes on a medium heat, you can check your oil to see if it's ready. And when you see it bubbling, you know what? I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's just prop it all in there. When you see it bubbling, that means that you're ready to fry. But if you have it bubbling with smoke, you're gonna burn your corn chips, so be careful. Now it's time to add our tortilla chips. You can add them in a bunch. Sometimes they stick together, and those are my favorite ones. Can I clarify for the views club? Mm -hmm. That noise in the background was not my stomach this time. That was your ice maker. It was the ice maker. I want to be clear. When those little balls drop, I mean, it makes the loudest sound, girl. It does. You guys heard it. 
Yes, but you know, I don't want to keep feeding the rumors. I was fed <laughs> the moment I walked in the door. Thank you. So just move them around a little bit so some of that steam uh, can be released and we get the crispiest, crunchiest corn chips we can get in a humid climate. <laughs> And once you see your corn chips turn a little bit golden, you want to go ahead and take them out. Make sure to place them in something like this, like a little wire. Uh, what was that? A strainer? A strainer. There you go. Thank or you, Cloud. A basket. A basket. Not on paper towels because we learned four years ago from Steph on Views on the Road that we don't put our tortilla chips on paper towels because it steams up your tortillas and it will not be crispy. Wow, Cloud, I am so proud Woo! of you. And what do you think I'm going to do with the chips right now? You're going to uh, warm buffet them. I'm going to warm buffet them. Let me show you what that is. If there was a test, I passed you today. Passed. <laughs> now we're going to warm buffet them. So just sprinkle a little bit of salt. It's going to make a difference. Set your pan on a medium heat and add some oil. We are going to fry some eggs. Do you like your chilaquiles with scrambled eggs or fried? Fried, like over easy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ternitos. Yeah. Over easy for me. Yeah. And you want to spread the egg white. And boom, done. I'm gonna pair this with some refried beans and I like to put a little bit of our sauce right at the bottom. Would there be an easier way to assemble this? Yes, if you're making it for a lot of people, you can throw all your corn chips into the pot of your sauce, but then you're gonna have a hit and miss. Some people like it really soggy, some people don't, and this gives you a little bit of both. So some prefer soft texture and other prefer, prefer the crunch? The crunch out of them. Mm -hmm. So if you prefer, um, the soft one, just throw them all in your pan and mix them around and you'll be set. Sounds good to me. What do you prefer, Cloud? Um, I prefer this method that you're doing because I do like some soft and then a little bit of a crispy end. Especially if you're gonna pair it with the beans, I'm, I'm for it. Now you know where my head's at. <laughs> Next, you wanna add your crumbled queso fresco and I'm gonna be using a little bit of both cheeses. I like the cheese pull. Next, we're gonna add our eggs. A Little bit of cilantro to garnish, make it pretty for your family and for flavor, of course, always. Last, but definitely not least, some Mexican crema fresca. Just drizzle it and let it happen. You won't regret it. And boom, done, amigos, we're ready to eat. Say ah. That's really the best. Can you hear that crunch from the tortillas? I can, that's the way that I like them. You did great. Yeah, even the spice level here is very subtle. It's not, it's not wild. It's perfect. Mm. I don't know, I've tried chilaquiles without the eggs and it just doesn't hit right. I don't know, maybe because it's a cut, I'm just accustomed to it. You know, I had it, without the eggs because of the babies before. Mm -hmm. But now we're at the point where we can step it up another notch with our heat and also with adding eggs. Ooh. My mouth just watered. Ooh. That buildup that comes from behind the, the mouth. Mm. <laughs> You're just ready to take a bite. You can't skip on the beans either. Beans are necessary. And you don't want your beans to be too dry. You want them a little bit runny. Mm -hmm. And it'll make this work great. Mm. It's perfectly seasoned. If I'm not talking, it's because this is that good. <laughs> and for those of you that don't like the sunny side up eggs, you can use scrambled eggs for this. Don't feel pressured. I know some of you can't handle it, but I'm telling you, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mm. will be the one pressuring people. Come on, just mm. try it. <laughs> mm. Just mmm. What is it, those things that make you go, mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah. 
As always, Views Club, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we want to give a special shout out to our first responders, our nurses, all of you going to nursing school. We're proud of you and we thank you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most easy and delicious chicken dinner. This is a recipe that my family requests often. And once I show you how to make it, you're going to understand why. You'll need two chicken breast, seven wajillo chilies, make sure to remove the stems and the seeds, one and a half onions, three garlic cloves, one jalapeño, a small bunch of cilantro, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of butter, one and a half cups of water, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one and a half cups of melty cheese, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of ground cumin, and one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. I've already cut my chicken into smaller pieces. And next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your ground cumin, your Mexican oregano, black pepper, smoked paprika, and if you only have regular paprika, that's okay. Combine all your ingredients so that we can fully coat our chicken with the seasoning. Next, you're gonna add your salt, and just a little bit because we're gonna be using chicken bouillon, and we also wanna keep our chicken juicy, so we don't wanna add too much salt right now. Add your olive oil, add your garlic, and fully combine all your ingredients. Once you fully combine all your ingredients, we're gonna go ahead and set our chicken to the side for about 10 minutes, and while our chicken is resting and getting all its flavor, we're gonna get started on our sauce. And for those of you that have selective eaters at home, I asked my uh, youngest son if he wanted to have chicken today. He said no, he wasn't in a mood, so I just chopped up some firm tofu. I seasoned it exactly the same way that I did our chicken, and I'm gonna sear it just like we do our chicken. To your blender, you wanna add your water, cilantro, onion, jalapeño, and if you have family members that prefer spicy dishes, you can use a serrano. Now, if you have relatives from Mexico visiting, you're gonna wanna use about three serranos for this recipe. Add your chicken bouillon, your wajillo chilies, and next you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your butter. Once you add your butter, you're gonna add your chicken. Give that a quick mix and continue to cook for another six minutes without moving anything. After about six minutes, you're gonna give that another good mix. Add your onions. And another good mix. And we're gonna continue to cook for another five minutes on a medium heat. Next, you wanna give that a good mix. And you just want your onions to be translucent, okay? So once your onions have become a nice little translucent color, we're gonna go ahead and add our sauce. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sauce that I have left over uh, to our tofu. Once you combine all your ingredients, you're gonna lower your temperature to a medium low heat and we're gonna continue to cook with the lid on for another 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna crack the lid because if I don't, it gets wild in here. Next, you're gonna add your heavy whipping cream. If you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay, you can use half and half. And if you don't have either, you can use milk. Once you combine your heavy whipping cream into your sauce, you're gonna get a handful of your cheese. maybe a little bit more. You're gonna turn your burner off. You're gonna give that a good mix. And we are ready to serve. All we're doing is waiting for our french fries to be fully cooked and crispy. And as far as your tofu, you can do the same. You can add your cream in here, you can add some cheese. It's really gonna be up to you on how you wanna dress up your tofu. And 
I love to serve this recipe with a little side salad. I'm gonna be using some lettuce, cucumber, tomato, carrots, and a little bit of lime. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, Provecho. Thank you, make sure to squeeze your lime on your salad, okay? This dish is very Mexican restaurant style. Anytime you go out to a place where you have seafood, you have your dish, french fries, rice, salad, and let me tell you, this just gets better every time. Yes, we know we're eating chicken, but we wanted to eat the sides. Well, our audience doesn't let us eat shrimp in front of them. They don't like shrimp <laughs> here. A handful. Mmm. Wow. This sauce is absolutely delicious. You did such a wonderful job. It's so flavorful. Sometimes I can even surprise myself. Mmm. <laughs> if you don't want to deal with the chicken, make the sauce, and load your french fries, and you guys are set. But I highly suggest you make the chicken, and I already showed you guys. How you can make it with tofu super easy well it's about to get really dirty in here because it is a sloppier dish for me to eat and well you guys have seen me through worse so <laughs> as always cloud and i are wishing you the best we absolutely adore you we want to thank everybody that joined us today and on that one we'll see you guys tomorrow bye adios Hello and welcome amigos. Happy National Burrito Day. And today I'm gonna be making you a guisado burrito. And if you don't know what a guisado is, keep watching. For today's guisado, you're gonna need one to two pounds of ground beef. And if you don't have ground beef, you can use ground chicken. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of ground cumin, your desired amount of black pepper. I'm just hoping it lands in that bowl. It did, <laughs> in that big bowl. <laughs> in that big bowl. And you can find the acrylic spice containers in our Amazon storefront. And the link is in the description area and now we're pinning it for you. So just look in the comments, it's gonna be the first one. So go ahead and add half a chopped onion. Whoa, that one wanted to shine. Your friends are here. They're here for me. Drizzle about half a tablespoon of olive oil or whatever oil you have at home and combine all your ingredients. What kind of olive oil are you using? I've never seen that bottle before. Teas. I ran out of our favorite olive oil and I have this one from Costco and I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, that's why you're not showing us. No, I can't. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna finish using it. I have a whole bottle to go. Don't <laughs> worry, Views Cub, I'll sneak a peek and tell you on tomorrow's episode what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start mailing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding it. <laughs> Put duct tape on it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to infuse it with some, some birria seasonings. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> And once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and set it to the side. I pre-soaked about nine chile guajillos in hot water and you just wanna let them soak in there until they get nice and soft or you can use the boiling method which takes about the same amount of time. I'm gonna use a little bit of this water so we can blend. You wanna add two roasted tomatoes and two roasted garlics. And for those of you that like spice in your food, you can add some chile de arbol, and that's gonna be up to you because I've been known to make really spicy salsa to the point where my family doesn't wanna to talk to me. Mm -hmm. That happened to me recently. Thanks for the warning, little girl. <laughs> you got me good. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom done, amigos. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil, and then you're gonna add your ground beef. And the reason I'm using my hands to put the beef in, it's because um, it's authentic that way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're able to crumble up that meat. <laughs> yeah. You wash your hands a lot, and I'm grateful for that. I have counted one time how many times I washed my hands, and it was like 25 or something, girl. Well, because you're always in the kitchen. That's right. Continue to cook your ground beef on that medium heat for another four to five minutes, and just start breaking down your ground beef. Once you've fully cooked your ground beef, you're gonna go ahead and add your pre-cooked potatoes. And if you like to use a microwave, you can chop up your potatoes and cook them for eight minutes, or you can boil them for about 10 to 12 minutes. Add your blended chili sauce. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half of water to shake off all the excess chili, and we're gonna pour it right on in. One to two tablespoons of chicken bouillon, and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. 
Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook until you see that your sauce is thickened up a little bit. That should be anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, amigos, we are all done here. I like my guisado a bit saucier because I like to dip my tortillas usually, but for those of you that don't want it so saucy, just use a little bit of less water and I'll leave the suggestions in the description area, but we are ready to serve and make this burrito. I'm gonna warm up our flour tortilla. If you guys need a recipe, I have a lot here on YouTube. Look up these on the road tortillas. <laughs> I try to help you differently in each one. They all have tips. To your tortilla, you wanna add your favorite beans. Today I'm using pork beans and I'll link it in the description area. Mexican rice, the star of the show. And I like my burritos this way with some cheddar. And boom, done, who's ready for a bite? And I'm just gonna show you another way you can plate this guisado. I'm nervous, let's see what you say for National Burrito Day. I was gonna say it's hot, but he can handle the heat. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time, Take baby, your finish time. chewing. Mm. Steph, do you have any tips for us while he's chewing? No tips at all. This is a super easy recipe to make. And even if you haven't thought out your ground beef, you know that you can still cook it. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> the teenagers won't stress out. They don't take out their meat in time to do Yeah, don't stress out. And if you guys need help on how uh, to cook your beef when it's still frozen, let me know in the comments and then I'll make a recipe specifically for you guys. With frozen beef. With frozen beef. It's good. It's very delicious and it's good and spicy. Oh, you like the spice in there? Yes. Well, I didn't know it was National Burrito Day. Nobody told me this. Oh, I thought you liked burritos that you would, you would know. <laughs> this was a surprise for you, sweetie. Oh, I love surprise. Okay. Thank you, Mom. And I'm out. All right. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> I'm going to make another burrito, friends, but I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. Happy National Burrito Day. Let me know what kind of burrito you had today. And if you couldn't have a burrito, let me know what you had to eat anyways. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We had so much fun cooking for you today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the most refreshing Tres Leches drink. And if you love our Tres Leches cake, you're gonna love this recipe. You'll need one cup of milk, four cups of water, one can of evaporated milk, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one can of lechera, or you can use half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of Mexican vanilla blend, half a tablespoon of cinnamon, your desired amount of strawberries, or you can use some peaches. And of course, to keep it fresh, get a lot of ice. And to enhance the experience while you're drinking this delicious, refreshing drink, I suggest you chop your strawberries and your peaches into smaller pieces. Add four cups of water, one cup of milk, and you can use soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, your horchata, rice milk, you name it. You can add it to this recipe and it's gonna be equally as delicious. Half a cup of heavy whipping cream, and if you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay, you can use half and half. And if you're gonna use this recipe for your bolis, your ice treats, make sure to use one cup of heavy whipping cream. Evaporated milk, your other tia lechera. And if you don't have condensed milk, you can use sugar. It's gonna be up to you. I just love the way that it tastes with some lechera. Vanilla, and I'm using Mexican vanilla blend because it's tradition. It's a staple in our home. <laughs> Cinnamon. And now you're gonna mix for a good 30 seconds to a minute until you fully combine all your ingredients. Ooh, that smells so good. <laughs> Rico. You have all been doing such a wonderful job learning to love yourself and you know when you love yourself you can see it in your kids right so I can see it friends you're doing a great job and this drink is gonna send you straight to the clouds because you know who loves you in the clouds you're the cloud <laughs> guess I'll see you there and you know who's next to cloud me so we'll see you guys there you little ray of sunshine <laughs> Once you're done combining your ingredients, you want to taste 
your drink, okay? So some of you might like it sweeter and some of you might say that's exactly what I need. And for me, I'm gonna use some of this to freeze for boli. So, you know, I'm gonna impress the kids today. They've been good. They're gonna get a little sugar. Ooh, cheers. <laughs> Take me down to the Paradise City. But the grass is green and your mom is pretty. Oh, won't you take me home? And it's a home run, amigos. I'm so excited for you guys to try this recipe. It's absolutely delicious and perfect for this hot season and for the holidays. And for your birthdays. <laughs> And this one is for my sweet little, little angel. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Wow, you're really smiling big today. Cheers, bebe. Salud, Salud. Salud. You don't trust me? No, I'm from Sonora. Mijo, that's when you don't trust somebody. You're from Sonora, good Lord. You trust mommy. <laughs> don't skip out on adding a lot of strawberries. It really enhances the flavor of this drink. Bebe, what do you think? Can't read it. You can't rate it? Why? I want you to. It's too good. It's too good? <laughs> All right. You can't rate it. It's that good. You know what I call that? Mm. Absolutely delicious. Is it from here to the moon, baby, good? Longer. <gasps> oh, my goodness. I thought the peach drink was going to be the 2022, like, fresh drink that we all love. I don't know. It's going to be a tie between this one and the peach drink. So it's going to be up to you guys. Let us know in the comments. And if you do like this recipe and you're a silent viewer, give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you very, very soon with another delicious recipe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Why did I sound so rehearsed? I got really excited. I'm sorry. Otra <laughs> salud. <laughs> salud. Ooh, you're almost Ooh. done. That's good. It's going to keep you full for a few hours. That's what you think. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Want to give a special shout out to all of our new subscribers and our new TikTok friends. And for the Views Club Junior, I know you're picking your nose in front of everybody. You keep eating that. You're going to get sick. So wash your hands, get a tissue. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm going to show you how to make beef mole tacos. If you love juicy, tender, flavorful tacos, these are for you. For this delicious recipe, you'll need three pounds of chuck roast, half a cup of mole paste, one cup of orange juice, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and some tortillas. Add your mole paste to your bowl, add your warm orange juice, chicken bouillon, and combine it to your mole is completely dissolved. Once your paste is dissolved, you're gonna start adding your pieces of beef. Once you've coated all your beef, you wanna add a little bit of oil. You can marinate this for 30 minutes or for best flavor overnight. I'm gonna go ahead and let this rest for 30 minutes. Today, I'm gonna to use my Instant Pot Dutch oven. If you guys don't have one of these, that's okay. You can make all of this on your stovetop. But for those of you that are interested, we're gonna link it in the Amazon storefront and I highly suggest it. I'm in love. It's amazing. I'm gonna press the sear slash saute button and we're gonna wait for this to warm up a good five minutes. So make sure you hit start. And while our Dutch oven is warming up, I'm gonna add a big spoon of lard. You can use oil, but the flavor that's gonna come out if you use lard is gonna be just like your restaurant. While we're waiting for our lard and our pot to warm up a bit, I'm gonna tell you why I love it. I love it because the cleanup is so easy. It's chef's kiss, it's a mom's delight. You have more time with your family and less time cleaning. I'm not about cleaning right now, so this is my new best friend. 
it's been about five minutes and I'm gonna start placing my beef pieces I'm not gonna place too many at one time because I want some to get a really good sear and if you start crowding it you know that we get more of a steam and a boil we want to sear on these tacos I'm gonna allow these pieces of beef to sear for four minutes without moving anything. Been four minutes and I'm gonna start flipping our pieces. You're wondering what kind of sear you're gonna get. You're gonna get a beautiful one. Look at that. And now that I flip those pieces, I'm gonna add the remaining pieces of beef. And again, I'm gonna let everything sear for another four minutes. Four minutes have elapsed, and I'm just gonna give it another turn to one of the sides where it hasn't been seared. Next, you're gonna add the remaining of your marinade right into the pot. I'm gonna add a little bit of water into our bowl. That's about one fourth of a cup, just so that we can get all of that delicious marinade right into this pot. It's so, so good. And I really did work hard on that mole, so I want it all in here. And the mole recipe, you guys can find that in the description area. We posted it not too long ago. And just take your pieces, move them around in case any of the sear pieces are stuck or any of that delicious crust, we can incorporate it into our broth. Next, you're gonna place the lid over your pot and we're gonna press our braise button and that's gonna braise it for two hours. After one hour, I'll come and move the pieces around to make sure nothing's sticking, but there has been a time when I didn't show up to move anything and nothing happened. You guys are gonna be okay. And boom, done. Our mole beef is ready for some juicy tacos. Look at how juicy and tender each little piece is. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I'm not gonna make you wait. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, And the salsa I recommend with these tacos is the salsa that everyone should know how to make. We did it over the summer and I'll link it in the description area for you. Squeeze a little lime juice. And yummy, yummy in our tummy. I'm really tired of eating super quick and easy tacos. So these tacos took a little bit more time, but they are so worth it because the flavor pulls through. I hope you enjoy these tacos as much as I do. Mm. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Now look away. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you have a beautiful weekend. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make pozole rojo step by step. It's almost an authentic recipe and the reason I say that is because we're gonna be using a 14 ounce can of pre-cooked hominy. Five pounds of pork butt, five pounds of pork shoulder, five pounds of pork feet, 18 wajillo chiles, 15 bay leaves, two garlic bulbs, two medium onions, one tablespoon of salt, five tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one and a half tablespoons of Mexican oregano, and 20 cups of water. Add your salt, place your burner on a high heat, and bring your water up to a boil. And once you've reached a boil, you're gonna add your pork pieces. Next, you're gonna continue to boil on a high for 15 to 20 minutes. We want all those impurities to rise to the top and then we're gonna start skimming them. In the meantime, I'm gonna start cleaning our chiles. And what I mean by cleaning is I'm gonna start removing uh, any kind of stem and seed. The bag that I have today, not many of them have a stem, but you wanna remove as many of the seeds as you can. 
If you happen to get one that has a little bit of mold, just toss that one and get a new one. I have our Wajio chilies. I like to take the ends off of our garlic just to release all those delicious flavors. We have our bay leaves and then I've already peeled our onion and I like to just give that a little slit at the end so that we can start releasing those delicious juices. Give or take 20 minutes, it's time to remove our impurities and I currently cannot find my skimmer. Can you guys believe that? So I'm gonna use my strainer and make do. I'm gonna make it comfortable for my home today. And this might help somebody that doesn't have a skimmer. I'm gonna share a tip with you. I like to go in and skim the impurities the first time and what helps me get all of the impurities is that I'll go ahead and place the lid on it for another three minutes and then I'll come back and remove the impurities that rose to the top. So it's two times to get it super clean. See all those bubbles? All those bubbles are impurities. You don't need to see this part. You already know what we're doing. We're just skimming our impurities. Next, you wanna add your garlics, your onion, your chiles, and your bay leaves. Place the lid over your pot and you're gonna to continue to boil for another hour. Within the hour, you wanna come and stir periodically to make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom and that you don't burn your patitas. And while our pozole continues to cook, we're gonna talk about the salsa pozolera. It's a salsa you use for your pozole so that whenever you make it in the big pot, you don't have to make it super spicy and that way the whole family is happy. I like to use chiles puya. They're smoky and spicy, but they are expensive. So if you don't have puya chiles, you can use your chiles de arbol. I'm gonna be using five chiles puya, and if you're gonna use chile de arbol, you wanna use eight, unless you really wanna bring the heat, you can use 15. You'll need six to eight garlics, and you can use the one from your pozole, but last time I did that, Cloud got really upset at me because she loves that on her tostada, so I'm not even gonna mess with her today. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil today, but make it comfortable for your home. Once your oil is nice and hot, you're gonna add your chiles, your garlic, and you're gonna toast them up for a good 45 seconds to a minute. When you see the color of your chiles have changed, you wanna take them out, and it looks like my garlic needs another minute or so. Add your garlic. You're gonna add 3 fourths of a cup of your pozole broth, one heaping tablespoon of salt, and half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. And next, you're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Don't be shy, you know you can use this for game day or while your pozole is done cooking. She mm. goes to one Denver Broncos games and acts like this. <laughs> mm. So, so good. I love that smoky bite. Go 49ers. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 40. <laughs> and next I'm gonna do my crema for my tostadas that I love with my pozole. Not everybody does, but I do. Do you, you like it, Cloud? I don't add the crema in the pozole. No, no, no. I just have it for my tostadas. Yes, that's correct. All I use is heavy whipping cream, but you can use any kind of table cream. Add some black pepper. Salt to taste. Give that a loving mix. And in just a few seconds, you have some table cream. Delicious. Make sure you clean the top of your hominy can. And we are going to open it up, give it a little rinse, and have that ready for when we need it. While that pozole is boiling, it's time for you to prep your toppings, your salsa, so that you can be ready to serve as soon as that pozole is done. It's been one hour, and now it's time to get our chiles and blend them. I'm gonna add some of our broth so it's easier for us to blend. I think about one to two cups should do the trick. It doesn't matter really because it's gonna go right back into the pot. I'm gonna do it a little bit different today just so that it's just a smoother ride for you at home. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken bouillon and about half a cup of your hominy. If you don't want to use your hominy, you can use about two tablespoons of maseca or you can even tear about two tortillas and toss them right on in. And next, you're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. We just need to pour all of this into our pot. And anything that's left over, I like to use the same broth, shake it up in my blender, and then pour it right back in. We need all that chili sauce. 
Be careful when you're shaking it because it stains. And I'm just adjusting our pieces. Make sure that we get all that broth to penetrate into all of that tender protein. Yummy. Place the lid on it and cook for another 30 minutes. Our chile rolls to the top, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of the broth to scrape down all of that delicious chile. One of the things I wanna to talk to you about while I'm doing this is you wanna taste the broth right now because it's been boiling with all the seasonings for 30 minutes and this would be a great time for you to adjust for your family if you wanted a little bit saltier and if you went too heavy on your salt, then I can't help you there. Somebody's gonna have a tummy ache. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The measurements are pretty exact for you. Uh, go ahead and start adding your hominy at this point and once you add your hominy, you're gonna to continue to cook for 20 to 25 minutes I do notice that when I use different brands, I might need 30, 35 minutes, um, but that should do the trick. Don't you worry. So just go ahead and make some room for your hominy to get infused with all these delicious spices and the flavors coming out of this pozole. If I sound excited, oh, I really need this in my belly. I need some comfort food. And this is one of my favorites. Mm -mm -mm. Add your oregano and you're gonna let that boil for another 30 minutes. And boom, done. We are ready to serve some delicious pozole. You know you're grown when you have two patas in your bowl. I like to add some finely chopped cabbage. You can also use some lettuce, a little white onion, a sprinkle of cilantro, a little radish, a squeeze of lime, and a few drops of your delicious salsa. I'm so glad we went with 15 chilies and Cloud wanted to be brave today. And we're ready for a delicious bite. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, delicious. Thank you. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. And to be honest, nothing beats pozole on a cold day. Now look away because I have to bite into this patita and it can get dangerous for you. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we want to thank each and every one of you that watched our recipes while we were gone, uh, giving us some peaceful time to transition. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today we're going to be making a chicken and rice casserole with a creamy chili sauce. Uh, we're going to start by taking two cups of basmati rice, and we're going to wash it. And I like to wash my rice until my water runs clear. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. Add your rice and continue to toast until you get that light golden brown that we all love and you get that scent, that nuttiness from toasting your rice. Mm. Once your rice is nice and toasted, you're going to add one bay leaf and one teaspoon of ground cumin and you're going to continue to toast for another 10 to 15 seconds. And you want to add three and a half cups of water. And if you're in a very arid area, you want to use four cups of water. Add one can of tomato sauce and two tablespoons of tomato chicken bouillon. Give that a loving mix and switch your burner on a low heat. Continue to cook your rice as suggested on your package. For your creamy chili sauce, you'll need eight guajillo chiles, 15 ounces of Mexican crema, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of tomato chicken bouillon. Take your guajillo chiles and remove any kind of stem that you see and your seeds. And I do wanna let you guys know that these chiles are mild. My, both of my children enjoy them very much and they never complain that they're spicy. And if you for some reason get a chile that has mold inside, don't worry, just toss it and get a new one. And if you're wondering what a molded chili looks like, it looks like that. It has mold and that green stuff. You wanna to toss it. So I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna finish with these chilies and then we're gonna soak them. Add your hot water and allow your chilies to hydrate for about 10 to 15 minutes. By then they should be nice and soft. Once your chilies are nice and soft, you wanna add them to your blender. Add your Mexican crema. If you don't have Mexican crema, you can use heavy whipping cream, ground cumin, garlic powder, Mexican oregano, tomato chicken bouillon, 
And there's a little bit of cream left in here, so I'm gonna add about one fourth of a cup of warm water. I'm gonna shake it up and pour it right back in to our blender. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Since we're having a beautiful cloudy day today, Cloud's gonna help me shred our rotisserie chicken. If you don't have access to rotisserie chicken, um, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to boil at least three to four chicken breast and start shredding, but I don't know if I'm the only one that loves to eat this part. No, I love it too. But here's a, a chip with the sauce that you made. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How about you come mm -hmm. and help me shred this delicious chicken for our friends? And for those of you that don't know my sister, Cloud, and you're new here, this is her only cooking channel, and um, she does a camerography work for us. <laughs> Among other things, but mostly the camera. <laughs> Here's a piece of breast for you. Thank you. So, do you have any tips for us while we're shredding chicken? Um, tips about what life or the chicken? The chicken. You always shred chicken for me, and it tastes so much better. I would say start off with a big chunk, and then just work your way into shredding it like it's string cheese. Okay. To make it look beautiful and even. Ooh. It's because you shred it like our uh, Mexican tias. That's why I like it. Yeah, and there's generally nobody in the kitchen when our tias are shredding our chicken. And I think here in the States, <laughs> everybody just puts it in the stand mixer and it and it shreds into just a bunch of little thin ones with no chunk in there. Yeah, you want a little bit of a bite. Those are the good for the taquitos. There they are, right there. Yummy. Thank you so much for helping us. We're going to continue to shred our chicken. Hang tight, friends. Our rice is ready. And let me tell you, this is my family's current favorite way of having our Mexican rice. It's not so traditional, but ooh. You hooked my son on it, so he's asking for this rice. It has time. so much flavor. I mean, you're not going to regret it if you try it. And if you do make this, please come back and let us know how much you loved it. Because I guarantee you will. Unless you don't like ground cumin, then we're going to have to talk about it. And now I'm just going to toast our tortillas because I have some flimsy ones that are cracking up. They're really funny. Look. Yep. All cracked up. So we're just going to toast them a little bit so they don't fall apart in our casserole. We're still going to use them. Hey, this is your Tia Cloud. I'm not kidding. I have dipped everything in this sauce. Chips, <laughs> chicken wing. It is so good. Take your creamy chili sauce and place it at the bottom of your baking dish. Next, you're going to place your tortillas right at the bottom. And if you see, I toasted them just a little bit more. I'm trying to avoid them falling apart, but also being part of the dish. Add a little bit more of your chili cream sauce. And you want to start making dreams come true by placing your rice right on top of that sauce. Smooth it out really good. And next, you're going to add a layer of your rotisserie chicken. Add a layer of your cheese. And today, we're using Chihuahua cheese, which looks just like this. We've been using it a lot. And whenever you have access to this cheese, this is the one you want to use. And if you don't have Chihuahua cheese, you can use mozzarella cheese or your Mexican cheese blend. They all work. But this one right here is going to bring the flavor. It has a little nutty, buttery taste and goes perfect with all these ingredients. Add some more of your delicious sauce right over the top. And next we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna place our tortillas right over our sauce. I sure hope you have sauce left after I finished about <laughs> half a cup. <laughs> I'll make do. Watch out, friends. Everybody's gonna be wanting your sauce. And for the next layer, we're gonna add the remaining sauce right over the chicken. As you can see, Cloud had a lot of this sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and your last layer is gonna be your cheese. Bake at 380 degrees and you wanna continue baking for 30 to 35 minutes. Not all ovens are created equal. If you see that your cheese is starting to crisp up too much, go ahead and place either a foil or a little parchment paper and we still have seven more minutes to go. And now it's time to serve. Oh my gosh, look at this cheese. Ooh! I want this piece. Oh my goodness! That gets me so excited! <laughs> Who's ready for a delicious bite? And this is how I like to plate it for the boys. can add a little bit of lettuce on the top and a little sour cream. And I still have a little bit of the salsa I made yesterday and I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit over the top. Enjoy. Thank you. It smells so good. And I'm sold. When it has cheese in it, call me.
<laughs> I'll be there. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. And just like that, your heart is soothed with a homemade casserole. Don't skip on that lettuce. It really combines all the flavors. And if you so happen to get not just the crispy cheese on the side, but a crispy piece of rice, please leave a comment because I know you and I both are going to love it. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Oh, you guys enjoy watching me eat a casserole? And I enjoy baking them. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank you all for joining us and reaching our milestone of 1 million subscribers. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Uh, just hang tight for me because I'm still doing a lot of unpacking and organizing, but as soon as all of that is set, you're going to get your gifted recipes. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I make cochinita pibil. This recipe has been requested on this channel about as many times as you guys requested the birria. And it's not just your favorite recipe, it's also my sister, so I'm super excited to show you how I make this recipe. For this recipe, you'll need eight pounds of pork shoulder, four banana leaves, eight Roma tomatoes, one box of achiote paste, and sometimes you can find it in a little package, three fourths of a cup of orange juice, and to that orange juice, you wanna add the juice of two limes, eight garlic cloves, half a cinnamon stick, one and a half tablespoons of ground cumin, three and a half tablespoons of salt, one and a half tablespoons of Mexican oregano, four cloves, eight large peppercorns, also known as allspice, and half a cup of water. And all we're doing here is toasting our banana leaves to get those aromas flowing. Remember, if you can't find fresh banana leaf, you can find it in your freezer aisle, just like I did. Be careful, I don't want anybody starting fires. Take it easy. Whoa, when you start smelling that roastiness, that means that you're done with one leaf and you need to move on to the other. And what else did I say? No starting fires. <laughs> to your blender, you wanna add your achiote, salt, Mexican oregano, cinnamon, ground cumin, garlic, cloves, large peppercorns, orange juice and lime mixture. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. And now you just wanna lay your banana leaf in the pot that you're gonna be using. I have a super large one because I have a large quantity of pork. Next, you wanna start placing your pork pieces right at the bottom. And you are gonna to have to salt your pork. So I like to do this in layers. And now that I've made room, I can salt the remaining pork in the bowl. Next, you wanna fully coat your pork with your sauce. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I'm gonna make sure that every piece of pork is fully coated. And I'm gonna do the same with the remaining pieces. It smells so good in here. Absolutely amazing in here. The fragrance in your kitchen is gonna make you so happy, but you're gonna to have to wait. You're gonna have to wait and marinate this for eight hours minimum or overnight. The cochinita pibil has been marinating overnight in a delicious adobo sauce. And now it's time to add half a cup of water, followed by your chopped tomatoes and your chopped red onions. You wanna cover your cochinita pibil with the banana leaves. Place the lid on it. And now it's time to place it in the oven. You're gonna to continue to bake at 350 degrees for three and a half hours or until your pork is nice and tender. Our cochinita pibil is just about done and I'm just gonna start warming up some tortillas. It's been three hours and 45 minutes exactly and now it's time for you to spoil yourself. Ay, que sabrosura! 
smells so good. What do you think, Cloud? I can't even contain myself. Are you impressed, sister? I'm always impressed. Use Cloud. Let us know in the comments if you're impressed. We are about to start shredding a little bit of this pork. Hold on just one second. Look at all that delicious broth. Give that a little squeeze and then, ooh, ooh, it's, it's falling apart. And this piece is for Cloud. And once I feed Cloud, I'm gonna show you how to prepare your tacos. Ta calentito, ten cuidado. Wow. You cut there on dust, the bravo. Mmm. It just falls Yummy. apart. Now, if you get pieces that have a lot of um, fat and tissue around it, you're gonna have to put in some work, but other than that, we're all set. Mmm, the spices in here See? are everything. So good. No, not good. This is amazing. Amazing? Ooh, we got an amazing, everybody. Oh, this is a super juicy piece. It's right next to all the delicious fat. Mmm. Put that in your taco and wrap it up. You're gonna top your tacos with some pickled red onion. Recipe will be linked in the description area. And if you can handle the heat, go ahead and add some pickled habaneros. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. Wow. That is some good stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. The most difficult part of this recipe is gonna be waiting because it can take you anywhere from three and a half to four hours. But let me tell you, once this process is done, you're gonna come back for more. And don't forget to wash down these tacos with our refreshing Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so good. What I love about making this recipe is the aromatics. When you walk into your kitchen, it's like a kitchen potpourri. And once it goes into the oven, I don't know if you're like me, I could smell it within 30 minutes and I just couldn't resist. So I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of these tacos. Mmm. Mmm. You enjoy yourself, we're not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we wanna thank each and every one of you for being here today because we wouldn't be here without you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a recipe that my ex-husband keeps asking me to make. And if you love our chimichangas, you're gonna love this recipe. You'll need large flour tortillas, three cups of shredded chicken, three roasted poblano peppers, 16 ounces of Mexican cream, one cup of chicken broth, your desired amount of melty cheese, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of butter, chicken bouillon or salt to taste, and oil for frying. To your shredded chicken, you wanna add one fourth of a cup of your Mexican cream. Then you wanna add your roasted and chopped poblano peppers. Make sure to keep about half a cup on the side because we're gonna use this for our topping. And you just wanna combine all of your ingredients. Some of you might need a little bit extra seasoning or an extra bite. You can add potatoes, corn to this recipe, but I like to keep it nice and simple with this juicy chicken. We're gonna continue by making our luxurious silky sauce. You need to put your burner on a medium heat and add one tablespoon of butter. Once your butter melts, you're gonna add your all-purpose flour. And you're gonna combine that quickly. Allow your flour and your butter to combine and cook for about 20 seconds. You don't wanna burn it, but you also don't want that raw flour taste, okay? Next, you're gonna add your chicken broth. And mix and mix until everything is well combined. Once you've fully combined all your ingredients, you're gonna notice that your chicken broth gets a little bit thicker and that's when you wanna add your Mexican crema. 
If you don't have access to Mexican crema, not to worry. I'm gonna make sure to leave a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. That one's so good, the menonita. The menonita, yes. Yes, crema menonita. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is looking so beautiful. I just wanna jump right on in. And once again, once you've combined your ingredients, you're gonna add one cup of your melty cheese. I'm using quesadilla cheese, which usually ends up being asadero cheese. Or you can also use Oaxaca, mozzarella. Those are all beautiful and luxurious. Once you add your cheese, you wanna place your temperature on a low heat. A lot of you remember that my ex loves cheese and probably why he keeps asking me to make him this. Look at this sauce. All right, so once your cheese is melted, everything's well combined, you wanna turn your burner off and we're gonna get started by filling our chimichangas. Some of you might not be using the Mexican cream that I'm using, and for those of you, I would suggest taste it, and if you need to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of your chicken bouillon, uh, you're more than welcome to add it to your chicken broth before you add it to the sauce. In this bowl, I have all-purpose flour, and I add water until I create a nice, amazing paste. That's gonna keep all of our burrito nice and sealed. Add your desired amount of cheese, your chicken filling, and if it sounds extra juicy is that I did add a little bit of chicken broth at the bottom and it just creamed everything so well and just beautifully. Ooh, so excited. Boom, done. I'm gonna set it aside and continue rolling the remaining chimichangas. I've already warmed up my oil and a way that I check it that most of you know is I stick a wooden chopstick, a wooden spoon, toothpicks, anything that's wood and not coated. And once you see those bubbles, that means that we're ready to fry. If you see smoke coming out of your pan, that means it is way too hot. Place your chimichanga in your frying oil carefully and we're gonna continue to fry for max two minutes, okay? And if you can see here, you can make them really big or you can make them very small. Well, that's not very small, that's still really big. <laughs> but you guys know somebody has a big appetite. And you slowly wanna start flipping it about every 20 to 30 seconds. Can these be made in the air fryer? They sure can, can. they okay. can. I don't know the exact temperature because I'm not using my air fryer that much. But for those of you that make chimichangas in your air fryer and you wanna share with the rest of our friends, you're more than welcome to leave a comment. And once your chimichangas are nice and golden, that means that you gotta take them out of that oil. And I'm gonna continue with the remaining chimichangas. Add a few of your roasted poblanos right on top. And boom, done. All right, someone's ready for a taste. Oh, this looks so good. Mm. I hope you like it. Friends, don't worry. He's going to be washing the dishes and taking really good care of the boys. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. We've had a lot of uh, friends asking for you. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, Views Club. <laughs> They're still here. Holding strong. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and I would like to give a special shout out to all of you that are co-parenting peacefully. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! 
so excited for you guys to try this casserole today. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and if you love cooking casseroles, you're going to love my take on a popular green bean creamy casserole. And don't skip too far ahead because I'm going to be showing you how to enhance this casserole for the holidays. For this delicious recipe, you'll need one and a half pounds of ground beef, one teaspoon of garlic powder, salt and pepper, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, three cups of green beans, half an onion, eight ounces of tomato sauce, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, one chipotle pot in adobo sauce, one cup of heavy whipping cream, and some Mexican rice. To your blender, you wanna add your heavy whipping cream, and if your heavy whipping cream is really thick, you wanna add one fourth of a cup extra of water. And if you guys saw our casserole the other day, you know that I do have super heavy whipping cream. Add your tomato sauce, your chipotle pot in adobo sauce, and if you don't want too much spice, you can use a can of the hatch chili or whatever spice you like. Your chicken bouillon, and if you have regular or tomato, it's really gonna be up to you. Just something that's gonna season this flavor just the way you like. And now we wanna blend until smooth. Done. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Next, you're gonna add your onions and you're gonna saute them for two minutes. We just want them to start getting soft and translucent. And after two minutes, you're gonna add your ground beef. And this casserole is beautiful because some of you use ground chicken, ground turkey, and all of that will work perfectly with this combination. Uh, vegan crumbles will go great in here. Yes, Claude, if they're using vegan crumbles, even better. Add your garlic powder, salt, black pepper, and for those of you that love the flavor of chipotle, you can add some of your adobo sauce in here and it's gonna make it even better. It's gonna enhance the flavors that you love from chipotle. And now you're just gonna start breaking your ground beef down and give it a loving mix. Once you've combined your beautiful ingredients, you're gonna lower your temperature to a medium heat and you're gonna continue to cook until you don't see any of the pink in the ground beef. And as soon as you see the pink is gone, you're gonna turn your burner off. You do not wanna overcook your ground beef, especially since it's gonna be going into a casserole. And now for my favorite part, assembling the casserole. You wanna use a little bit of melted butter at the bottom of your baking dish because this is gonna help the rice that's gonna go on top crisp up on the bottom and it's just gonna add another layer of flavor to your casserole. And if you're not using butter, that's okay. You can add a little bit of olive oil and it's gonna achieve what we're trying to do here, that little crisp. Our first layer is gonna be our Mexican rice. I showed you how to make this rice several times and you can find it in our holiday feast recipe. My kids love it this way. I think that's about two, three cups. And having a little bit extra of this rice is not a bad idea. It never goes to waste in this house. Next, you're gonna layer your ground beef and make sure that you're including all that delicious juice. And my family has already voted for this year's favorite casserole. And the winning casserole of the year for our family is the dinner casserole that had broccoli, cheddar, cheese, and sausage. My family went crazy over it and that was our winner this year. But let me know what your favorite one was down in the comment section and now you're gonna add your green beans. And I'm using thawed out green beans for this particular part. If you have canned green beans, even better. You'll notice that when they're frozen and they thaw out, they end up getting nice and soft. So if you're using fresh green beans, make sure to cook them thoroughly because you don't want anybody biting into a hard uh, green bean, especially not in a casserole. That's not how this works. And last, you're gonna pour your delicious sauce over your green beans. Remember, taste your sauce, and if you feel that your sauce needs a little bit more salt, more chicken bouillon, you can do that. And in order to get all that delicious sauce, I used one fourth of a cup of water, shook it, and now it's time to pour it into our casserole. And now for your topping, you can use your fried onions, you can use your crispy jalapeno toppings, and if you don't have access to these, not to worry. You can also use panko crumbs. If you're gonna use panko crumbs, make sure to add a little bit of oil or melted butter, combine it, and then sprinkle it on top of your uh, casserole. But if all else fails and you like spice, you can try. Some of your pickled jalapenos will work great right on the top, add a little bit of fun. And some of you are gonna add cheese to this, but today I'm not feeling too cheesy. <laughs> I've had a lot all month. <laughs> and my godson loves to watch our show, and this is oddly satisfying to him. So here you go, godson. I hope you enjoy this. 
sprinkle your fried onions over the top. Today I'm going to do a mixture of onions and a little bit of the crispy jalapenos. And try not to eat the whole bag of jalapenos while you're pouring it on here because these are absolutely delicious. Those go great on salads. They do. They're from, they usually find them in the salad section, but you can use them for just about anything, even as a small little snack. Ooh, yummy. You guys know that my foil has been sticking and I know you mentioned to use some little nonstick spray, but this, this works out for me. So I'm gonna add a parchment paper. I'm gonna place the foil over a baking dish and we're gonna bake at 380 degrees for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, you're gonna remove your foil and you're gonna continue to bake for another five to six minutes. And boom, done, yummy, yummy in our tummy. I'm so excited for you guys to try this casserole today. And last but not least, it's purely optional. You can add some crema fresca right over the top. And these are the casseroles that I love because you can just scoop it up. You don't have to slice just to scoop. Get a little bit of everything in here. Mmm. The green beans smell delicious. And I am gonna need a little bit of extra crema fresca. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, buen provecho, hijotes. You said buen provecho, hijotes to me. <laughs> I can't with you. Mmm. There's gonna be those casseroles where you eat and you're like, eh, I could have done without, but this one is gonna take your breath away. So beware, you're gonna to have to wear your stretch pants because it's that good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Not only is the flavor amazing, every single layer of flavor that you put in here is well balanced. Everything that you're looking for for comfort food is in this casserole. So I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. And, and it's not gonna be the last casserole I share with you. I have a whole notebook full of casseroles. And the more you guys watch these and the more that you like them, uh, the more I'm gonna share the recipes with you. So look away, cause it's starting to get dangerous in this plate. Mm. I'm about two seconds from crying, it's so good. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we love you so much that we're gonna tell you to cover up. It's about to get really cold for you guys and we wanna make sure that you're safe, nestled and warm and we're gonna be praying for all of you. So please do your best and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you a recipe that's over 100 years old. For this recipe, you're gonna need four cups of hot water and you're gonna need some extra hot water for your chiles. Seven huajillo chilies and two ancho chiles. Make sure to remove the stems and the seeds. And what you wanna do is you wanna add some hot water and you wanna soak them for about 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. One pound of ground pork, eight ounces of chorizo, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and your desired amount of bolillo or telera bread, two chipotle pods with adobo sauce, one teaspoon of ground clove, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and about four garlic cloves, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, salt to taste, thinly sliced lettuce, half of a thinly sliced onion, and avocado to taste. Take your flour and dust your bread. And what you wanna do is you wanna close your bag. And you wanna shake it so that we can coat all of our bread with the flour. And your bread should look like this. Take your softened chiles and add them to your blender. Add your water, ground cumin, thyme, Mexican oregano, garlic, cinnamon, ground clove, chipotle, and if you want it really spicy, then you can add four chipotles. And don't forget your adobo sauce. And now you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done!
Place your burner on a medium heat and allow it to heat up for about two minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna go ahead and add your ground pork. Continue to cook your pork for another three to four minutes. After about four minutes, you wanna make a little well in the center of your pot and you're gonna add your chorizo. Combine all your ingredients, set your burner on a medium heat and continue to cook for another four minutes. Give or take about four to five minutes, you're gonna add your blended sauce. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook on a low heat for 15 to 18 minutes and not to worry friends, you do not need a lid for this part. Make sure to come in periodically and stir your pot. And what you wanna do after about eight to 10 minutes is you wanna taste the sauce, okay? And the reason you wanna taste your sauce is because you wanna make sure that it's seasoned well. And depending on the chorizo that you're using, you never know. So go ahead and taste your sauce. And if you need any salt, this is the time where you would sprinkle your salt, mix it in, and continue to cook for the remaining minutes. And remember, your salt is to taste. Go light, don't go too heavy, because you can always add, but you can't take it out. Oh, a magic potion. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. And you don't need to add chicken bouillon in here because the spices take care of all the flavoring and all that, right? This is a well seasoned dish. You do not need chicken bouillon unless you're addicted. That's a different story and that's to taste. And you can sprinkle <laughs> it right on. You sure can. <laughs> we have a saying around here in this channel and it is, make it comfortable for, for your, your home. home. That is correct, Cloud. And after about 18 minutes, our ingredients are fully cooked, our sauce is nice and thick, and now we can start preparing our pambaso. Take your lettuce and add it to the bottom of your pambaso. Next, you're gonna add your desired amount of onions, your thinly sliced avocado. And for this version, you don't need the cheese, right? You do not need the cheese. You have enough fat from your avocado. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yummy. And next, you're gonna pour your filling right over the top. And next, you're gonna take the top of your bread, you're gonna dip it into your sauce, and you're gonna place the hat. And boom, done, amigos, who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Amigos, regardless of what recipe you choose to make, it's gonna be sloppy, so just enjoy it, okay? There, it's like eating tacos, it doesn't matter. Just dig in. And once I dig in, just look away after because it's gonna get dangerous. Buen provecho. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's magical. I have a little bit of chili on you. Well, when they ask me how I got my smile, it's not gonna be the Dark Knight movie. <laughs> it's yep. gonna be your bombazo filling. Mmm, so good. It's so flavorful and seasoned. Friends, you're gonna love it. Mm. And this is why we cook our street foods at home because it gets dangerous. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. You well, have well. sauce there. You do look like the Joker right now, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But you're the sweet angel, a little Joker, if one existed. Thank you. I, I love when you clown on me anyway. <laughs> I just hit a pocket of flavor that burst in my mouth. So friends, when you guys try this recipe, please come back and let me know how you enjoyed it. <laughs> if for some reason you got a smile from this pambaso, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. I would love to repost you on our channel. Or on our page. Or both. <laughs> Chat or both, we'll put you guys here next. But yeah, this is this is a winner for sure. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. 
We want to take the time to thank our new subscribers. And for those of you looking for the traditional street food bombazo, go ahead and click this recipe right here. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Amigos, I can't stop making this incredibly easy and delicious dish. Everyone in your house is gonna absolutely love this, but I really do hope that you like this as much as I do. In this bowl, I have some chopped pork butt in nice big chunks, and if you don't have pork butt, you can use whatever pieces of pork you have that have a lot of the fat on it. That's what we want for this particular recipe. Take your salt and sprinkle it in your bowl. Add some chili powder, and today I'm using Wajillo chili powder, black pepper, onion powder, ground cumin, and some Mexican oregano. Combine all your ingredients and make sure that your pork is coated with all of the seasonings. Once your seasoning is well combined, you're gonna add your olive oil. Give that a good mix. And you wanna set this to the side for 15 minutes. You'll also need white onion, red and green bell pepper, cilantro, and a lot of garlic. And I'm just gonna slice it in chunks. That means they're really thick. <laughs> just like that. Mm. Oh, that makes you happy. Yes. I knew it. And this is optional, but Cloud loves it when these little tomatoes burst in her mouth, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We are gonna be using these little tiny tomatoes, but if you have Roma or whatever tomatoes you have at home, they will work for this recipe. Set your burner on a medium heat and allow it to warm up for three minutes. Once your pan is heated up, go ahead and start adding your pieces of pork. It smells so good. Ooh. Now whatever you do, do not move this for the next four minutes. After four minutes, you're gonna add your garlic, just sprinkle it in, and we're gonna mix this around. Oh, what a beautiful sear. You see what happens when we don't move and move our meat? <laughs> it's a valuable lesson I have learned. Me too, but sometimes I do push it and I'm trying to get things done quick, but it's worth waiting and not overcrowding and let it happen, you know? That's right. So once you mix everything, you're going to continue to cook on a medium heat for four more minutes. I have some chicken broth and I'm going to be adding some lemon to it, okay? After four minutes, we're going to add our chicken broth and lemon mixture. Place your burner on a low heat and we're going to continue to cook for 25 minutes. And after 25 to 30 minutes, you want your sauce to get to that point right there. Can you guys see that? Where it's almost gone, but it's still there? You see it. Perfect. So that should take you anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. When you get to that place, you're going to start adding your onions. And our juicy tomatoes. If you love juicy tomatoes, let us know in the comments. Cloud would love to respond to you. <laughs> and go ahead and mix all your ingredients well. And you see how just a little bit of the sauce that we have left coats your onions perfectly. So when they soften up, they're going to be well seasoned as well. Now I'm gonna to continue to cook on a medium heat for three to four minutes. And after about four minutes, now we're gonna add our green and red bell peppers. Now let's give this a quick mix. I'm really feeling this dish today. <laughs> Our you know, yummy. <laughs> I can't stop making it. Every time I make it, I just want to eat more of it. It has just a well-balanced part to it that just with the pork, it's, it's out of this world. Yeah. The other thing I like about this dish is that it doesn't feel too heavy after you eat it. Even if you eat it with rice, it feels really light. 
I feel like such a ballerina after I eat this. Right. Yeah, you have a good amount of vegetation there. Yeah. Go ahead and turn your burner off. And you're going to sprinkle your cilantro. Give that a quick mix again. Ooh. Oh my goodness, look at that. That glossy onion right there. Ooh. some of that gravy that's left to put on the rice. Well, there's going to be some on there and it's going to coat your rice beautifully. And that rice is made to perfection. Just the way you like it, sis. Just the way I trained you. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. <laughs> Set your Instant Pot on saute and add a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil today. Allow your oil to heat up in your pressure cooker for about three minutes. Add your rice, and today I'm using basmati rice. Your favorite, Cloud. My personal favorite, especially Ooh. when it all lands in the pot. Yeah, it's okay. You got jokes today. <laughs> sprinkle it in, sprinkle it in. Once you combine all your rice into your oil, we're gonna be here and lightly toasting our rice. We do not want it to that golden color. Just a nice little toasty look to it. That should take you about three minutes. Once you've slightly toasted your rice, you're going to add your water. Lemon juice. Go ahead and stir. And make sure all your rice is underneath that water. Seal the deal. And we are just going to place this on our rice setting. Once your rice is ready, you want to allow it to stay in there until the pin drops on its own. Fluff up your rice. That's gonna allow some of that steam to release. And you wanna add your cilantro. And boom, done. Cilantro lime rice in your pressure cooker. I've added some purple pickled onions and red radishes, and now it's time for us to take a delicious taste. Say, ah. I hope you got a juicy tomato in there. Not yet, but I will. Buen provecho. Mmm. <laughs> mm. The tomato did it. It's that magical. That combination is amazing. I really love dishes like this that keep you engaged because I want to just hop everywhere and just keep eating. The pork is so soft and juicy. Every bite has flavor, right? Good job on this creation, girl. I love it. Mm. Bring some more recipes out of the vault. I see all those notebooks in your room. I don't think anybody wants to see my creations. Oh no, don't start. No, not, not right now. <laughs> You're loved. You're appreciated. We want the secret recipes out. <laughs> Everything's already been done. It's just a way of transforming them. And I am really good at transforming them and creating them. Mm -hmm. If you don't release those recipes, girl, I'm gonna sell them on eBay, those <laughs> books. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we wanna give a special shout out to all of our silent viewers and also our subscribers that have gone missing. If you guys see them, let them know that we're still uploading recipes for you guys. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. What do you mean missing? Can you come back and explain? <laughs> Really, I don't know where you guys went. I, you asked me for recipes, I posted them, I didn't see you respond. So now I'm making what I want. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> no, but seriously, we do miss some of you. We, we know life gets busy, but we do miss you. Yeah, I, I've been thinking about a lot of people that I haven't seen, so if you guys see them, let them know that. I'm still here, Cloud is still here, and we're still hungry. That's correct. Hello and welcome back, amigos. Today I'm gonna show you how to make creamy chicken and potatoes.
For this recipe, you're gonna need three chicken breasts and you wanna slice your chicken breast into thin little strips like this. Now, what I did with the thick part of the chicken breast is I just butterflied it a little bit, but I didn't uh, butterfly it all the way through. Align all your chicken strips and just slice them in half. And I'm gonna continue slicing the remaining chicken the same way. Once you're done slicing your chicken into strips, go ahead and add two tablespoons of baking soda. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us a tender piece of chicken and it's also gonna eliminate odor. I'm gonna let our chicken set for about 10 to 15 minutes and while it's setting, let's go over the remaining ingredients. Five to six red potatoes, one third of a cup of all-purpose flour, one third of a cup of cornstarch. Add your cornstarch to your all-purpose flour one teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream, half a cup of warm water. To your warm water, add your chicken bouillon, and if you have chicken broth, go ahead and use that instead. And today you're using the natural chicken bouillon without that, MSG. That is correct. I can tell the difference now. One medium sliced white onion, two tablespoons of butter, and friends, one thing we all agree on is Kerrygold butter is the best out there, especially for home cooking. Four garlic cloves and one chipotle pod with about two tablespoons of the adobo sauce. To your blender, you wanna add your heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have heavy whipping cream, make it comfortable for your home. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping our friends out. Next, you wanna add your chicken broth or your chicken bouillon and warm water combo, which ends up being the same thing with extra flavor. Garlic, chipotle, and your ground cumin. Next, we are gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. I rinsed our chicken and I made sure to pat dry and remove all the excess water. Next, you wanna add your salt and combine. Next, you're gonna combine your flour and cornstarch mixture and add half at a time. We just wanna coat all of our chicken uh, evenly, but you don't wanna overdo it. So depending on the size of your chicken, you're gonna need about uh, one fourth of a cup or one third of a cup. And once you're done, make sure to clean your area and clean your hands. I'm gonna start a pot of boiling water so we can start boiling our potatoes and then we're gonna move on to the chicken. To your pot of boiling water, you wanna add your potatoes and be very careful. I don't want you to burn yourself as you splash me. <laughs> and I just want you to boil these potatoes for about eight minutes. You want them to be a little bit al dente, not fully cooked because we are gonna be straining them and adding them to our, um, our delicious pot that we're gonna get started on right now. Set your burner on a medium high heat and add your desired amount of oil. You're gonna need enough so that we can sear our chicken. Allow about 30 seconds for your oil to get warm and add your butter. Let your butter do a dance in the pan, that way you don't burn it. And combining your butter and your oil, you prevent the butter from burning. Oh yeah. And next, you wanna start adding your pieces of chicken. Make sure not to crowd your chicken so that we can get a really good sear. Work your pan little by little, and once you start getting a good sear, you can move some of your chicken to the side, and then you can start adding the remaining pieces. And we're gonna be here for about, I wanna say six to seven minutes. Next, you wanna add your onions. We're gonna add our potatoes and our sauce to our cast iron. And to our blender, we still have a little bit of sauce stuck, so I'm gonna add about three-fourths of a cup of water. I'm gonna shake it up, 
You didn't tell me it was going to smell this good in here. <laughs> it's so good, right? Mm -hmm. That garlic really comes through. And you want to pour it right on in. Go ahead and mix your ingredients gently. Once you're done combining your ingredients, set your burner on a low temperature and we're going to continue to cook without a lid for 15 more minutes. And after 15 minutes, we are all done. What I like to do is I like to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro over the top for a garnish and also for flavor. And boom, done, amigos. Our delicious dinner is served. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Ooh, the lioness came to work today. It's called humidity. <laughs> <laughs> it just jumps up and grabs you no matter where you're at. Mm. Mm. I have a trivia question for you. If it's hot and humid, what do you eat? Ooh, me? Yes. I eat whatever I'm craving. <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> I really do. Friends, everything in this plate is so soft and tender. The chicken is cooked to perfection with so much flavor. You're gonna love it. Mmm. Ooh, buen provecho. You know, the flavors are sealed in the chicken. And look at how easily I can cut through. So yummy. And you want to take some of that broth with you, right? Mm-hmm. You need, you need some extra sauce for sure. So, so it can be best friends with the rice. It's a must. Mm-hmm. Yummy, and if you don't have red potatoes, that's the best for this dish. Use gold or russet potatoes. It's gonna work out. And what if I don't have chicken, but I have everything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this chicken is a showstopper. It really is. You have to try it. Mm -hmm. Friends, sorry about my eating yesterday with the tacos. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It's just that when it's me and tacos, it gets really intimate and we're eating here <laughs> in my home with friends. So that's how I enjoy tacos and I enjoy food. Maybe the person or the people were not familiar with the taco rule. You must finish your taco in less than three bites. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let us know how many bites it takes you to finish one single taco. Yeah, let us know. And for this chicken, you guys are gonna really love this recipe because you can take a lot of chicken and season it, sear it the way that I showed you and fully sear it and cook it and then let it cool and freeze it so that whenever you add it to your pan the next day or two weeks later, it's super easy to make this dish. It freezes well, just make sure to fully cook it. And even if you were to not cook it and coat it with the, with the flour and your seasonings, um, it'll, it'll still work. How do I know? Because it's a lifesaver. The texture of this chicken is fabulous. And it's mm. not spicy. Mm -hmm. There is no spice in here unless you want more spice. And if you really like your food spicy, I suggest you add a whole can of chipotle instead of just one little pod. But I have a lot of family members right now that can't handle spice for some reason. You sound like you have some experience. You said the full can. Mm -hmm. And if you guys like this combination of chicken, let me know in the comments and I'll make another dish um, similar to this, but just change it up just a little bit. I have a feeling that everybody watching is going to end up making this recipe. It's always the stewie or the guisados that um, families end up loving the most, right? 
Yes, this is a very, very special dish, and I think you guys are gonna make it famous, just like you've made a lot of our dishes famous. So thank you guys so much, and I hope you enjoy, and that you feel loved and cared for by Cloud and I. We love you kids, and I mean all of you. Hope you have a nice weekend. And now I'm gonna mix the rice with all this sauce, and I'm gonna have to get more. Ooh. Mmm, so yummy. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We wanna say thank you to all of our unsubscribers and our subscribers and friends. If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up. And um, if you guys do that, Cloud will be a lot nicer to me because I always forget to say <laughs> that. <laughs> and on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome back amigos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the best meal prep chicken you'll have this year. It's not just good for tacos, which is what I'm making right now. It's also really good for um, to put over your rice if you want to place it into a torta, a sandwich, your tostadas. And the best part of this chicken is that if you serve it, it gets a little bit cold in the lunch. Don't worry, it's still going to taste really good because we have a cold uh, yogurt sauce that's absolutely divine. So go ahead and keep watching if you want to learn how to make these tacos and most of all, if you want to make this chicken. I took some chicken breast, I butterflied it, and I tenderized it nice and flat. And now we're going to start seasoning our chicken. For your seasoning, you'll need one clove, and that's the spice, half a tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of salt, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of sugar, and two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Well, coarsely chopped, you, you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and add your seasoning to your chicken. It sounds like you're recording by a rainfall. Yeah, we have a rainy day today. It's actually really beautiful. I'm not excited about the humidity, but it is a beautiful sound and it's so pretty to look at. Go ahead and massage your chicken with the seasoning for a good minute, minute and a half. Be gentle, don't be aggressive. Not for this part, okay? Once you've massaged your chicken with the seasoning, you're gonna use the juice and zest of one lime, two tablespoons of olive oil, and if you need to use less, that's okay. And if you don't have olive oil, guess what? You can make it comfortable for your home. You're gonna add one third of a cup of chopped parsley and flat leaf or the curlier one will work. One third of a cup of chopped cilantro and if you don't want any of these, guess what? This chicken is just gonna be so well seasoned that you're not gonna skip any flavor in your chicken. You're gonna be okay, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and massage this for another 30 to 40 seconds just until it's well combined. And boom, done amigos, our chicken is well seasoned. You can save your marinade for later use, you can freeze it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna place this right into our multi-cooker. One of our Views Club friends suggested that we get the Aura Pro Instant Pot, and friends, we are not disappointed. So we are gonna get started today, and we are gonna press our sear button. Cloud, can you help us out? Sear, saute, saute. Hey! <laughs> Okay, friends, this is your Thea Cloud telling you, just like I tell my sister, do not touch the pot. Wait three minutes and you'll smell the heat in the air. And now we're ready to saute some pollito. And we're gonna allow the chicken to sear for a good five minutes. After about four to five minutes, you wanna flip your chicken. And now we're gonna slow cook for three hours. Friends, I'm trying not to be such a bossy mommy, but I do have to tell you, don't start making your sauce until you've cleaned your kitchen, okay? You don't need any of the chicken uh, heebie-jeebies around. And if you haven't taken a shower today after you're done making a sauce, make sure to take a shower. That's for the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need one cup of plain yogurt. If you have Greek yogurt, it works well with this recipe too. Don't feel obligated to just use plain. And then we're gonna add about half a cup of mayonnaise. Did you get a tattoo? What tattoo? The green on your wrist? I should. 
I was thinking a about. Leaf? Would you get a, a I don't know. I was cilantro. thinking about. <laughs> maybe I should get a cilantro leaf painted over um, my burn from last year. That if, would you work. if you don't have a burn, then what are you doing in the kitchen? What are you doing in the kitchen? Tell us. Friends, it's because there was a lot of stress in my life last holiday season and I managed to burn myself here, but it's it's healing well. It, it's done well, it's just a mark. We're okay. <laughs> We're gonna add the juice of one key lime. If you don't have a key lime, the flavor is gonna differ, but you can use lemon or a regular lime. Works great, but if you ever get a hold of key limes, ooh, take advantage of it, friends. They are beautiful. We're gonna add a little small bunch of parsley. You don't have parsley, go with cilantro. And if I don't say cilantro that way, it doesn't taste as good. That's right. <laughs> I have a rep to protect, guys. We get more drama from not pronouncing the words in Spanish than we do the other way. So like if we say cilantro, our friends, our amigos that speak Spanish, our and our family will come for us, guys. Yes, and some of our Views Club friends would be like, ¿Qué están haciendo? What are you guys doing? You guys know how to say it, so say it right. <laughs> You're gonna need uh, garlic, if you have two or three, it'll work perfect. One jalapeño. <laughs> you like how I said that? <laughs> but say it how you want to say it. Un jalapeño. You're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin. I love those acrylic spice containers. You got me into them. They are, they're magical, they're great. It took me a while to take them out of storage and now that they're here, I'm like, where have you been the past few months, you know? <laughs> You're gonna need uh, one teaspoon of salt and now we are gonna blend until smooth. You guys ready to get to dancing? Was yeah, that here. one teaspoon of cumin? One teaspoon of each, yeah. Oh, okay, that's One teaspoon that's of black easy. pepper, one teaspoon ground cumin, and one teaspoon salt. And obviously you adjust your salt to taste before I forget. One fourth of a cup of olive oil. Friends, for those of you that get a little bit, um, like how much did you add, Steph? Don't worry, it's all in the description area. I think we tried it for three recipes where we didn't add in the description area to see if you guys would prefer that. For those of you watching on your TV, hello. Um, so everything's in the description area and I'm trying my best to let you guys know the measurements as we cook. And boom, done. And boom, done, amigos. Our chicken is ready, it's juicy, it's tender, and I'm just gonna take it over to the chopping block and I'm gonna chop this up into little pieces like you would see at a taco shop because apparently I can't get enough tacos. But I'm gonna be letting you know. We dream of tacos. We do dream of tacos and other things you can pair this chicken with. It doesn't have to be tacos and we'll talk about that while I'm chopping. We're gonna be using a roasted salsa today. I'll leave all the ingredients I used for this particular one today. All I did was roast, all the ingredients blend, and now I'm gonna cook it just a little bit to keep it nice and warm and to preserve it a little bit longer for me this week. I'm gonna be warming up some flour tortillas and then we are ready to start chopping up this chicken taco style. Mm -mm -mm. Before I start chopping our chicken, I wanna go over what we have here. I have some purple onions with a little bit of ground cumin and paprika. We have our red radishes, key limes, cucumber, freshly chopped iceberg lettuce, our cooked salsa. And for those of you that like a more milder but yet hot salsa, that one's gonna do it because I know the salsa Cienfuegos, you guys were on fuego <laughs> with that one. And here we have our chicken. You can really just use your fork to separate the chicken, but I want thin little slices like this. This is the look that I wanna go for. I'm gonna make Cloud's first tasting taco and we're gonna add a good amount of chicken. Don't be stingy with the sauce. Do not be stingy with the sauce. <laughs> Now's not the time to be greedy. Nope. Be greedy with your personal time. Yep. <laughs> and then all you're gonna do is just boom, boom. Oh, let, don't let me forget because Cloud will come for me. Just a couple of radishes for me. There you go. Thank you. The limoncito. Thank you, sister. For Cloud. Mm. Oh my gosh, that sauce is spectacular with this chicken. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, 
Buen provecho. Se va y se corre con el taco. Pero... Ay, iba a decir con el borracho, pero... Hey, hey, hey. jokes today. For those of you that know, mm. talk to me in the comments. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're awful. Mmm, necesito más salchita. Yummy. I can't get enough spice lately. I don't know what's going on with me. I love it. Oh, did you buy the Costco side of uh, Texas coffee down there? No, it's the H-E-B size. Oh, okay. The San Antonio coffee blend. Oh my gosh, so good. Mmm. These are really juicy. Delicious. Mmm. Oh, I forgot I can't be dancing here. Yes, you can. Remember when you used to uh, pack these lonchecitos for me when I was in the office? Mm-hmm. I think everybody that remembers uh, me doing mukbang remembers when I used to tell them, if you have a single, you know, a family member or whatever, make sure to help them making uh, dinner, picking up the kids at school. Good looking out. Um, now I'm the single mama and I'm living my best life. Uh, hey, that's why I made you some agua fresca. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, we have a tip for you. I remembered <laughs> you can make the same dish with different kinds of protein. Mm -hmm. You can use pork and you can use fish. And is that it? Oh, tofu. You can use tofu as well. Mm hmm. Sear it. You have to sear it. Sear it and then add the seasoning and then cook it for a few minutes if you're using tofu. Don't put your tofu in the multi cooker though. Use that one on the stove top, right? Mm -hmm. And this recipe is not just for uh, the multi cooker. You can do this on your pan. You can place it in the oven. You can place it in a regular uh, crock pot. Almost there's something else. Oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please let us know if you make this recipe. And we want to give a special shout out to all of you who are driving and not texting. And Cloud's giving me that look because she was almost hit by a texter on the road. So if you're texting, put your phone down, take your time. You are valuable to society and to your family. So don't text and drive. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. It's that time of the year when we all need a cozy treat. And today we are going to be making arroz con leche. For this recipe, we're gonna be using one and one fourth of a cup of long grain rice. One and three fourths of a cup of water. Three cups of milk. One can of evaporated milk. One cup of sugar. Two cinnamon sticks. One eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Half a cup of raisins. To your raisins, you wanna add some warm water. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your water. Add your cinnamon sticks, add your rice, once your water comes to a boil go ahead and place a lid over your pot and continue to cook on a low heat for another 10 to 15 minutes. Place your burner on simmer and add your milk. Next you want to add your evaporated milk, sugar, salt, Combine all your ingredients and we are gonna leave our pot on simmer until our rice is ready. After 10 to 15 minutes, go ahead and remove your cinnamon sticks. And this is a part where you wanna taste the texture of your rice. You don't want it to be too mushy. And if for some reason it's crunchy, you're gonna have to cook it another two to three minutes until it's nice and soft or you get more of an al dente uh, texture. Next, you're gonna add your milk. Combine all your ingredients. And for those of you that like raisins, this is a part where you're gonna add it. But right now, our family's been going through debates about raisins or no raisins, so I'm gonna keep them out and I'm gonna be adding uh, raisins individually to mine. Continue to cook on a low heat for about 10 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, you'll see that everything is well combined and cooked. And my recommendation to you is gonna be to continue to cook uh, your arroz con leche till you get the consistency that you're comfortable with.
I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Mmm. When it's ooey gooey, that means that it's perfect. It's not overly sweet. Soaking your raisins and then adding them gives you a little bit of a different flavor, but it's still so good. And they actually soften up a lot better. Could I also soak my raisins in something else? I think from the last time we made this, everybody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. Soak them in rum. Mm, so good. Mm. This is comfort food at its best. And your rice is nice and soft. And it's not mushy, which is the best part. I don't like mushy. Arroz con leche. Me salió lo sonorense. A mushy? Leche. Mushy, mushy. No, como te dije, leche. Leche y mushy, mushy. Mm -hmm. This is such a delightful treat. Uh, let us know in the comments what this recipe reminds you of. And if you've never made it before, don't worry, you got this. The direction and any extra tips that I have are gonna be in the description area. And I just, it's holiday season already for me. I already started where I want all holiday food. I wanna be with family and loved ones. And we hope you guys take care of yourselves because we love you. And thank each and every one of you for your sweet messages. Ah, you guys had me blushing. <laughs> They're so sweet. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we want to thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome back. Look what we have frying up, amigos. We are making fried quesadillas with fresh corn masa. It's gonna be nice and crispy on the outside and ooey gooey on the inside. I'm gonna be showing you a few little things that we added inside of our fried quesadilla and it doesn't stop there. We made a hot lava salsa that you're absolutely gonna love. So come and take a look and see if it's something that you wanna make. We have them nice and crispy on the outside, ready to come out for you. Ooh, it's excited to meet you today <laughs> and to see most of you again. And our hot salsa, is a cooked salsa today, and it's cooked to perfection just like you. What you'll need for this recipe is fresh masa. If you don't have access to fresh masa, you can use your instant corn masa. Your choice of melty cheese. Today we're gonna to be using La Chona and HEB's Queso Asadero. They melt to perfection and they are ooey, gooey, and perfect for this recipe. And for those of you that need a little extra protein, I'm gonna make it a lot easier for you. Go ahead and buy yourself a pack of chilorio. It is absolutely amazing for tacos and it's gonna go excellent with this fried quesadilla. And for our masa, you're gonna need one tablespoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And remember to adjust to taste. And to add that extra sazon, we are gonna be making a fresh roasted salsa. You're gonna need tomatoes. And look what I got a hold of today some red jalapenos, cilantro, garlic, one fourth of a purple onion, some salt, and some lime juice. And to top our fried quesadillas, uh, we're gonna be using some crema fresca, avocado, a little cotija cheese, lettuce, and on the side, we're gonna be using cucumbers and your radishes, and some purple pickled onions. To your natural corn masa, you wanna add about two tablespoons of water and what that's gonna do, it's gonna help us break down the clumps so that it's nice and soft when we add our next ingredients. Next, you're gonna add your baking powder and your salt. And you're gonna mix it for a good two minutes. And once you've combined your ingredients, you're gonna notice that your dough is nice and soft. You're gonna need about two to three tablespoons to make your little ball so that we can make it into a tortilla nice and flat and then we can assemble our quesadilla. Just something really tiny. You place your little ball here. You're gonna wrap it with love in your little plastic and you're gonna press like a tortilla. Give it a good press. Looks pretty good to me. Now you're gonna open it up just like this. 
And this one's just gonna be cheese, okay? So what I like to do, I like to pick it up this way and press that top part right here. And then what I do is I cup it with my hand, just like that. You can also do it straight on here, but I find that this one gives you a better shape and a better seal. And now I'm just gonna set it to the side and I'll show you how we make the one with chilorio. And for those of you that are new, this little plastic is just a Ziploc bag uh, plastic that I'm using. Any little thick bag like that will work. Just wash, wash it with warm water. Yep, do not use soap on it. If you use soap on it, you're not gonna be happy about it. For the ones that I add extra filling to, I like to press a little bit more than just the ones with cheese, because that gives us a little bit more space to work with. So I'm gonna add the cheese all to that one side. And your chilorio should be about one tablespoon. Don't push it. You guys know how I get in. I'm gonna tell you, if you want them to look beautiful and perfect for your family, don't, don't push it. Make them want more for next week. So you're gonna press right here, and that's when you're gonna bring your hands, just like that. See? See all that love that goes in there? I see it, and I feel it. Your beautiful hands. Mm -hmm. Be gentle. And I'm doing it this way. When I'm cooking for my family, I'm usually doing this right by the stove top and just one after another, boom, 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 and done. It's a lot easier. And the best part is that you can freeze these. And I always get the first bite for those of you that don't know when we're cooking in here. Yes, Cloud <laughs> always gets the first bite. I'm grateful, I'm grateful. <laughs> and boom, done, amigos. We are ready to fry. You get about a dozen of these, about 12 to 14, and then you might have a little bit extra and that's when you wanna make it very special for somebody super tiny and special. And yes, we did fill it up with no cheese and just chilorio. I have my pot on a medium heat. I added a little bit of oil. I have our garlic, our tomato, our chiles, and our onion. We're just gonna roast this until they get nice and charred and soften up just a little bit before we blend them. Okay, mi corazón, you're gonna add your bunch of cilantro and you're just gonna break it up with your hands. And I'm using a lot today because, you know, when you, you use spoil in your food and these kind of things, you wanna use a lot of cilantro to help your body eliminate those, um, those metals from your body, okay? Ooh, it smells so good. We're nice and roasted. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna place all of these ingredients into our blender. Mmm, <laughs> it smells so good. Add your salt, and now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, almost done. Add your salsa. I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here. Hot lava. <laughs> it is hot lava. We're gonna add a little bit of water in here just so that we can get all of our salsa in this pot. Ah, uh, si, te quería encontrar. Clean as you go because you don't wanna get anything stuck on your stove top and it's just not a, a good look guys clean up and we have those kitchen towels linked in our store if they're my help. favorite ones yes if you need help finding them just let me know in the comments if you're from sonora you know that you have to clean up as you go porque te regañan and it's just the lifestyle it's a vibe guys <laughs> And we know everybody cleans as they go, yes, but this is an actual requirement. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Now that our salsa is nice and warm, I'm just gonna switch our burner to a low simmer, just so it's not bubbling everywhere. Keep it nice and calm because once you raise that, you know the hot lava comes through and this is definitely a really amazing salsa. And I hope you guys like it as much as Claude does. This is her favorite salsa. It is, the hot lava salsa. I'm gonna check our oil to see if it's ready to fry. You wanna use a wooden spoon a wooden chopstick, toothpick, something that's not coated. That is wood. You're gonna place it in here. And when it bubbles, that means that we are ready to fry. Woo! Place it in gently. And it should only take us about four minutes max to fry our quesadillas.
and you see how beautifully they float to the top that means that we're just gonna flip it over so that that other side is just a little spot that needs frying friends if you guys like this little um, clay pot Claude has it linked in the description area with a lot more details and I still love it. it's my favorite <laughs> to cook with right now and after three to four minutes you'll see that your quesadillas are nice and crispy and it's time to place them to the side I like to use a wire little rack uh, make sure you're not using paper towels because that's gonna take the crispiness away and we don't want that sister okay. that's not a rack that's a basket it's a little basket a rack ya me conocen ya saben como soy ya saben <laughs> And for those of you that don't know what that means, it means you already know how I am. Making it comfortable for my home. <laughs> That's right. Oh, that one's pouring out some chilorio juice. Yummy. And I'm going to continue frying the remaining quesadillas. While our quesadillas are still frying, I'm going to slice them up right about here. This one's really hot, if you're wondering. <laughs> Ooh, you see that? I do. Yummy. Next, you're going to add your lettuce. And I shredded our lettuce really, really thin. Perfect like that. Add your avocado. Add your crema. Cotija cheese. Pickled onions. And some of your fresh salsa if you don't like spicy salsa this is not the one for you we can link some in the description area for you and I'm gonna prepare a few more here but Cloud's gonna get the first bite with her pepinos and her radishes you. while we finish frying the rest of our quesadillas but you guys are gonna be ready for a big big bite real soon thank you sister you're welcome I'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh, Buen provecho. Ooh, we love a good crunch. Mmm. That's so good. That's so crunchy. I'd love to do that. Yummy. And we do have a tip for you. If you hear that crunch and you want that crunch in your bite as well, I'm gonna take a guess, and I think that you need to cook it, fry it a little bit longer to keep that crunch. Guys, I cheated. I asked this question earlier off camera. <laughs> it's because it's so good I can't talk. I find that the salsa on its own is spicy, but not when you pair it with your fried quesadillas. Uh, it has a good combination of flavor in it. <laughs> It really does. It really does. <laughs> Ooh. I have my agua fresca too. Let me show it. Right over here, guys. Right over here. Delicious. Friends, if you see a comment that I didn't feed Cloud, can you guys please stand up for us? Because my favorite thing to do is feed my family, and my sister is no different. I will always feed everybody before I feed myself. So. I just wanted to clarify that Cloud gets fed. I get fed quite often, every day, um, even when we're not recording. My sister's my neighbor, and we're a community, and we love to eat. Mm -hmm. I don't skip any meals. You can see for yourself on my personal Instagram account if you want to see mm. or if you're curious. This agua fresca is good. What is it? It's lemon. Limonada? Yes. Mexicana. Limonada Mexicana. Ooh. There's a debate between the key limes being um, limones and limas. In Mexico, you call the key limes, you just call them limones. And I will go at it with my family about their but lives. There's, <laughs> but there's also places throughout the Republic that it's known as lima. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just depends on your home, right? Mm -hmm. We so grew up in the... Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we grew up in the same household, but I call my lemons lemons, and I call my limes limes. I do the same. Yeah. That's all about your upbringing. That's it. Mmm. This is so good. Mm -hmm. 
Our friends that love the crema fresca, this is a perfect recipe for you. Yeah, and you know, I really love fresh corn masa. I do too. Mm. You guys are gonna have to look away. You are gonna look away. This yes. is like my my new shame look because I love to eat, and now I'm being like told that I don't eat well. <laughs> One thing we can all agree upon is that we are bottomless pits. Thank you so much, everyone. I like to eat, you guys. I really do. Thank you to those of you that been watched us this weekend. Oh my goodness, did you see whose um, who's baby's almost ready? She's 40 weeks pregnant already. What? Yep, she's ready. My prayers go out to her because I know what that feels like. And um, yeah, hope I mean, you're you a are, massage. <laughs> you are in our prayers. We're so excited to see the baby. And um, yeah, more of Youth Club Juniors. And she was so sweet. Okay, one more bite out of this one because I'm going to sit with Cloud and eat another one. Mm -hmm. I'm on a round two. Mmm, yummy. This is definitely a teenager food, right? I think it's a universal food. Yeah, but you know, I can picture myself after like school being a teenager and my mom having these and I would be really, really happy. That's right. Mm. This would be more of a nap after like you, you know, when you're a teenager, you get home and you're starving. You have your fideo, your sopita, and then this is what your mom would be making. Make this for your teenagers, for your young adults. They're going to thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry I can't focus. This is one of the best foods that you're ever going to have if you love Mexican food. And you know I love chilodio, I love cheese, I love corn, and I love food. <laughs> yes. And for those of you who have your puestecitos and you're selling food, this is a great one. It holds well. It reheats well. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to make this one for selling. Friends, van a comer rico ahora. Riquísimo. Mm -hmm. Don't fall asleep on us on Wednesday because we have something spectacular for you. And by spectacular, I mean a food combo that's just divine. And I was told not to say anything, so mm -mm. here I am with my arms crossed, not saying Don't anything. Don't say anything. But it's going to be amazing. Hush up. <laughs> Ma'am? As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Thank you guys so much for all the lovely uh, messages over the weekend. I had a really good time uh, chatting with you guys. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make guajolotas. If you like tortas, if you like tamales, you're going to love this recipe. You're awful when you know when you say things in front of everybody. That's just going to get me to get super giggly and nerdy. What you absolutely need is you need to get a hold of some bolillo. If you don't have access to bolillo, you can get away with using telera, which is a more rounder bread, and you can put probably two tamales in there. But for this recipe, you're going to need some bolillo. If you need a recipe on how to make this because you're out of reach from a Mexican uh, bakery or grocery store, not to worry, I'm gonna link a recipe in the description area. You'll need your favorite tamales, whether they're green or red, not to worry. I'm gonna link a few of our tamal recipes in the description area for you, but today I'm gonna be using my mom's uh, secret recipe, which is pineapple pork, because she likes savory sweet, and those are the ones that I'm gonna be using today. You'll need some refried beans, and I kept mine pretty runny today, but if you need help with your beans, I'll link a recipe in the description area. Your choice of queso fresco, the one that I'm using today is called queso fresco campestre from this particular brand. It does taste a little bit saltier than uh, regular packaged queso fresco, but I love it. And these are the kind of uh, queso frescos you get out in the rancho, the ranch, out in the wilderness. It's where artisanal. There's artisanal, there you go, where there's nobody around for miles and miles. Made by hand. Made by hand. Oh my goodness. And we also have a good You're recipe making me blush. here on the channel. You're making me blush. Guys, I can't focus. I've been so hungry. Some crema fresca and some salsa picante, friends. This is absolutely amazing and spicy. And to make it easy clean up, make sure you bring your little papers.
I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. My tip to you is to make it comfortable for your home. If you like fried tamales, fry one up, put it in here. If you love egg, go ahead and fry yourself an egg and place it in here. And friends, the options are endless when you're making a guajolota and I am ready to take a humongous bite. I know these are the plain ones, but it seems like the plain ones always hit the spot. So try it plain first. Not that there's anything plain about it, <laughs> but try this, this version first and then add your other stuff to it. There's nothing plain about this. <laughs> Cheers! Amigos, this is a perfect lunch to pack for the kids, for those that like to eat a lot like Cloud and I do. Um, the bread just smells so good and then your tamales, this is comfort. So if you're gonna pack this for a lunch, make sure it's on a Friday or the day um, where you have the following days off. I think that that would work. Or pack half because someone's gonna go into a, a food coma. <laughs> Sleepy time. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -mm. That's just me, right? Mm -hmm. With you. <laughs> pack a full one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure to pair it with some vampire blood. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> make sure you make some Jamaica, a really good and delicious agua fresca, whether it's horchata. And if you guys haven't tried our strawberry key lime agua fresca, you're sleeping. It's time to wake up. It is, I had that all weekend. It was so good. You loved it? I was a little hyper, but it's okay. You can make them into bolis, into ice pops. It is just so good. The boys absolutely love that one. You can make it into an adult ice slushie. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is amazing. Wait, isn't slushy already have ice, so it would just be a slushy, not ice slushy? It would be a slush. A slush. You can call it an ice slushy. Oh, okay. You make it comfortable for your home. <laughs> Friends, Cloud and I are known for going to the grocery store and getting a fresh pack of queso fresco and whatever fresh bread there is there. And this reminds me of that. It's so comforting, and there's nothing better than when you have your warm bolillo and you grab either queso fresco, some aguacate, your salsa, it's just perfect. This is this is definitely a dream come true. And if people are in Central Texas, where can they find you? At the grocery store, at a bookstore, where else? Home? <laughs> margaritas. That's true, <laughs> margaritas and burgers. That's true, where they sell margaritas, we will be there. Yeah, love you guys. When there is injustice. Oh my gosh. Oh She's yeah. coming out from Santo Poco. And I was thinking like <laughs> Duck Queen Duck. Oh, I thought you were talking about the three amigos. <laughs> that movie is so funny, but so disturbing. <laughs> it's so wrong, but it's all we had to watch to represent our people when we were younger. So yeah, there was some we learned to love it. <laughs> we learned to love El Wapo. And if you think you're an El Wapo, let us know in the comments. You're awful when you know you say things in front of everybody that's just gonna get me to get super giggly and nerdy. And they're gonna get mad at us for giggling, but we like to giggle. <laughs> I do giggle a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's something we struggled with as children. Yeah, I giggle a lot now because I no longer cry. I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't cry that often anymore. Mm -hmm. But you do, you do have some lipstick right under your That's okay. Oh, okay. It, it went everywhere today. Yeah. Let us know if you want to be part of the three amigos. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you love this take on guajolotas. Cloud and I absolutely love Mexican street food. We can't be in Mexico right now, but we can sure make a lot of these dishes at home. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be showing you how to make refried bean taquitos. We are going to top these with so many toppings that you're going to say, Steph, please stop. And I'm going to say, I can't. Let's get started by warming up our lard. To a medium hot pan, go ahead and add your lard. And friends, if you need a detailed recipe on how to make uh, pinto refried beans, make sure to look in the description and I'll set that link for you. Once your lard has melted, or your oil has warmed up, go ahead and add some chopped onions and chopped serrano or a jalapeno. It's gonna be your preference. Continue to cook for about two to three minutes until your onions are nice and soft. If your onions get burned during this process, go ahead and toss them and start all over. Next, you wanna add your pinto beans. 
Next, you're gonna mash your pinto beans, or you can also place them in your blender and then pour them right into that oil. Both of them will work. I'm kicking it old school with you guys. I'm showing my age here. <laughs> Remember friends, however you choose to mash your beans is your business. Make it comfortable for your home. Don't let anybody tell you what to do in your kitchen. You're the boss. I switched my burner to a medium low heat. Nobody wants to smell burnt beans. So take it easy. We're gonna be here cooking them for another two, three minutes just so that we can get them nice and dry. Once your beans get nice and dry, where they can just move, almost like a little ball for you, then they're ready. You see that? I do. When they look just like your mama used to make them, mm -hmm. then you're ready. I'm gonna share a tip with you next that's really important. So those of you that didn't skip, I'm so happy you did it. Let me show you. This is your tip. If you're using lard from a carton, you have to warm it up before you add it to your beans. But if you have bacon grease, you're okay, right? Yeah, you're okay because that's already cooked, but when you have the lard in the container and it's just a block, you have to warm it up uh, to refry your beans just like that. Pero yo soy bien traviesa. I'm a troublemaker in the kitchen, you guys know, so this is so much fun for me. There's fried beans and then there's refried beans. These are refried. Refritos. Refritos. Say with us amigos. Refritos. Well you don't have to roll the R if you don't want to but it's a good time to Let practice. me see roll your R cloud. Girl I thought you were going to start singing reggaeton with that one. <laughs> so go ahead and stir it up. Little darling don't you cry. Just like that. <laughs> I went heavy on my pot of beans today, so I won't be adding any salt. They're just perfect today. And I'm gonna be here for another minute and a half, just stirring it up. Okay, amigos, once your beans have absorbed all that oil, we are ready to go. For our next step, you're gonna need to warm up your tortillas. You need eight to 10 seconds on each side, just enough to where they're pliable. And not all tortillas are created equal. Today, I am using the HEB yellow corn tortillas. Let us know what kind of tortillas you're having a difficult time with and what's working for you in the comments. We gotta help each other out when it comes to corn tortillas. And we know freshly made are better or tortilleria are better, best, but we don't have access to any of that right now. That is correct. In this little bowl, I have our taquito paste, which is about two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. And all you have to do is mix and dissolve until you get something nice and thick. Okay, you're gonna take your tortilla and you're just gonna half moon your paste. Your desired amount of beans. My beans are hot, but my hands are hotter. <laughs> and now you're gonna go ahead and roll. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna continue to roll. Warm up your frying oil. Get a wooden chopstick, a wooden spoon, some toothpicks, place them in here. When it starts bubbling like that, that means that you are ready to fry. If you have smoke at the top of your pan, that heat is too high, so lower your temperature. And it has to be an uncoated wood utensil. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping us. I don't know what I would do without you, girl. I like to share the errors that I make in the kitchen, too. Go ahead and start placing your taquitos into your frying oil, and this is gonna happen quickly. Uh, what kind of oil are you frying with? Today, I am using peanut oil. I transition from one oil to another while I find my groove, friends. <laughs> if you get some flyaway frijoles, beans, just scoop them out. You don't want those popping on you and they will pop. All right, y'all, I'm in front of the class. Um, I poured too much oil in that skillet for my sister, so we just removed it. That's all we're doing, removing some of that oil. 
and boom, done. Our taquitos are ready. I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna continue with the rest of them. This little uh, rack that I'm using, this metal rack, is from our Instant Pot and I use it for just about everything when it comes to oil. The basket? Yeah, this little basket. And boom, done, amigos. Let's get started on those delicious toppings that I was talking about. Add one and a half cups of your half and half. Make sure it's yours, not anybody else's. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Add your queso fresco, and I'm using a whole pack. Salt and pepper, and we are gonna blend until smooth. If your blend is too thick, gradually add some water so that we can get a nice and smooth and not too runny and not too thick type of consistency. And boom, done. Friends, I'm repurposing my mayonnaise little squeezer bottle and I'm just gonna pour this saucy sauce right on in. If you're gonna need this sauce a little bit longer, go ahead and add a uh, half a tablespoon of white vinegar and it'll help you keep it a little bit longer. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, You know when you don't know what to eat and you need something really quick, like a snack, a dinner, this is your go-to recipe. It's super easy to make. Amigos, when you fill your taquitos up with beans, you're gonna know that you're gonna get some fallout. It's the same as frying your potatoes, uh, your potato tacos. So my suggestion to you is to use a little bit less oil and everything will work out smoothly. And let me tell you, it is so worth your time. It's a super affordable recipe. And that's not the only reason I love this recipe. It is just comfort food. It tastes like home. It tastes like something our abuelitas, our mothers make. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please come back and let us know if you love this recipe as much as we do. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make lentil soup in your Instant Pot. Add your five cups of water. If you want this to be a little bit more stewy, you only need to add four cups. Add the two cups of lentils. Next, you wanna add your potatoes, and I just cut our potatoes into small little cubes. Add your chopped zucchinis, some vitamin A for cloud, your carrots, and friends, just cut them into small little pieces. I always find that they're better to, to eat this way. My older son doesn't have a preference for carrots that are cooked, but that's the way I can sneak it in. Your tomato. And next, you wanna choose between an Anaheim and a Poblano pepper. If you're using a poblano, make sure that if in the inside, when you slice it down the middle, it has a little bit of the orangey, red, yellow, um, stay away from that one unless you like the heat because that one's gonna bring you a lot of heat. I sound like I'm scaring you guys. That's not what I'm trying to do. I know that you guys always ask about the peppers, the chiles, mm -hmm. they're really spicy, but that's uh, that's the best advice I can give and you. And you're so sweet. You always say it when it's a family recipe. It is, I want you all to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Add your onion and make sure that you chop it nice and fine, just like the Beast Club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two garlics, ground cumin, and your choice of bouillon. If you like vegetable, use vegetable, beef, chicken, make it comfortable for your home. I have a question for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you uh, pre-soak the lentils? I washed them, but I didn't pre-soak them. Because the Instant Pot's gonna do the job. It's gonna do everything that we want right in here. Let me put a lid on it. Place your lid and seal the nail. Ooh, oh, 
cool. It just did it naturally. And it closed the vent? Okay. Yes, close your vent. <laughs> Next, you want to pressure cook for eight minutes. I feel like I'm here with the accordion. <laughs> give me a beat, Cloud. Give me That's a beat. That's not a bad place to be. <laughs> oh, we got too excited. While our lentils are cooking, we're going to get started on our Mexican grilled cheese. And what makes this a Mexican grilled cheese? That we're using bolillo bread. Are those stains on your blouse or is that water? It's Cloud, water. I do my own stunts. I wash my own dishes. <laughs> Friends, make sure you wash your dishes. Okay? Seriously, if you don't have those wet spots, like, did you really do the dishes? I know, everybody's like, you rarely get dirty. No, I just get splashes of water, but I rarely get dirty when I cook. That's true. So you're gonna add your mozzarella cheese. Then I guess it's no longer Mexican. Excuse me? <laughs> they use queso crema in Mexico. <laughs> Okay, okay, they okay. use cream cheese there. This is now Mexican, guys, apparently. <laughs> and our Mexican cheese here is queso fresco. Don't but, be scared of queso fresco unless you're getting the one from your tia that's in, like, the yellow juice. Yeah, the yellow juice, non-pasteurized one is, is questionable, but it's good. And to make this even better, yes, I'm going to make this even better by adding some cotija. It just hits different. And lately, I don't even want to tell you how much I've been eating the past three days, but just know I'm a little embarrassed to be here today. <laughs> All right, friends, let's go cheese it up. Add your butter to a medium hot pan. And while your butter's melting, place your bolillo over it. Just allow it to dance. Just like that. And boom, done, amigos. Our grilled cheese is ready and our soup is ready to serve. Now it's time to switch it to vent. Be very careful because the steam is really hot. Hotter than fire. And boom, done. We have a big pot full of lentils. All right, amigos. Say, ah. That's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would be quite the taste. It would be divine. Ooh, it's nice and hot. Say, ah. Uh... As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And for those of you that are enjoying all these delicious veggies, make sure to let us know in the comments. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Uh -huh. I'm going to put ice cubes in it. It's that hot. <laughs> You like your soups that hot. I do, but then I start sweating and get all sniffly. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you're going to make something, make sure you make the soup, of course. <laughs> but the naughty kid in me, if you've never had this Mexican grilled cheese with the cheese combo blend that I just gave you, if you like salty, buttery flavors, you're gonna love this. And it's one of those things in moderation, so make sure you're having your soup with your grilled cheese. My favorite part of the lentil soup uh, are the lentils. The lentils? Mm-hmm. And the broth is so light, I love it. Mm. Well, you eat a lot of lentils, right, Cloud? Uh, once a week. So for those of you that have low iron levels, make sure you're eating your lentils. They're really good for you. Mm. Otherwise. Bye. Ooh. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'm going to be showing you how to make Mexican street corn enchiladas. Corn tortillas. Look at you, Kelly, here. 
tortillas. No, I wasn't counting. You can use yellow, white, whatever corn tortillas you have. Make it comfortable for your home, amigos. Mozzarella cheese or your choice of melty white cheese. Corn. You can use canned corn, frozen corn, or fresh corn. Just get a hold of some corn. Mayonnaise, cotija cheese, queso fresco, and some half and half. For your toppings, you can use our favorites, tapatillo, tajin, and a key lime. Place your pan on a medium heat and add a little bit of oil. Place your tortilla on your pan and continue to warm on each side for about 10 seconds, just enough until your tortilla is nice and soft so that we can roll them up easily. For your sauce, you're gonna need to blend. We're gonna blend our half and half. Our queso fresco. And our mayonnaise. If I said that with an attitude, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to. I just get really serious in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you get serious when it comes to mayonnaise? Yes. Wow. And food. <laughs> And now we're just gonna blend until smooth. I'm using a Vitamix, but regardless, if you have a Ninja, if you have a bullet, whatever you're using to blend, it's gonna work for this recipe. We just wanna break down the queso fresco and infuse it with the mayo. Oh my goodness, all the fattiness in here, all the flavor that's gonna come out. You guys are in for quite a treat. Blend? Yeah. And say it with me, amigos. Boom. And boom, done. Wow. You got excited? You guys got excited? We're so excited. Yay! I'm ready to eat. <laughs> pour a little bit of your sauce for the bottom. And I'm going to pour the remaining sauce into a bowl. Dip your tortilla. And now you want to add your cheese. Sprinkle some cheese. Your corn. Oh, you're all looking so excited. This already looks amazing. A little bit of the cotija cheese on the inside. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. And we have a lot of enchilada style recipes. You know, I just said, if you don't have chile, it's not an enchilada, so. But that's how we refer to rolled up corn tortillas, right? That's right. How beautiful is that? So good. Yummy. Now we're just gonna place it in our tray. But you are going to put chile on this is tapatio, so I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get picosito. I'm going to continue filling up the remaining uh, tortillas, and I'll be with you shortly. Make sure that you started preheating your oven at 380 degrees, amigos. I got you. You got it? I got it. Thank you. I'll be back. Gotta love cloud. Hey, hey. Next, you want to pour your sauce over. Ooh. Next, add your cheese. Some corn right on top. And then you want to add some cotija cheese. When you add this cotija cheese, it's going to get nice and delicious in that oven. ready for a bite. Oh, that cheesy got cheesy. For my Mexican corn cocktail, my elote, I just cook the corn in a little bit of butter and water. Sprinkle a little bit of salt. The remaining sauce from our enchiladas, I'm just going to place it in here. A lot of cotija. And that right there is just some lime juice. Woo! I love this. And I love us. This is gonna be delicious. It's heavenly. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Make sure you stick around because we are doing a taste test here at the end and sometimes you catch a few of our bloopers. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! And this wouldn't be complete without some tajin, hot sauce, and some lime.
It smells so good and fresh. Ooh, it smells like street corn. It does. Say ah. Hmm. Buen provecho. That's real. It's a real treat. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't squeeze some of the lime on there, it's gonna taste different. But treat it like you would your cocktail, your elote. Amazing. Your esquitation. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We just love corn around here. What can I say? I like corn. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they want to say to you. Those of them that know you, say it in the comments. What do I want to say? <laughs> you know, it's a natural beauty reference. Mm -mm. I'm going to share with you guys a drink that I've just been really wild about. You even came with a bottle opener? Yeah, girl, I'm ready. What you got there? I'm really loving this refrigerator. I get some uh, orb ice. Let me show you guys. Some custom ice? Yeah. We had um, somebody tell us that they have the same refrigerator. I don't know they have it, but they have some that has cubes and then they have these uh, cocktail ice. And ooh, this Topo Chico twist of lime is amazing. I love key limes and this is the kind of freshness that I get. And you can get it at your local Costco. Costco has this by the case and it's more of a, a bigger bottle. It's one to put at the dinner table, right? For everyone to share. I mean, if I don't drink it all, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I stay hydrated, but uh, our mother raised us to always have uh, aguas minerales. Yeah. And she's like, that's how you stay hydrated. That's how you keep your skin to do this. And she gives me all the remedies. So I just honor my mother like I am for the rest of this uh, Lent season. But I wanted to share with you guys that I really, really uh, love this. So if you guys are having something to eat instead of getting your soda or your fully loaded agua frescas, try this uh, twist of lime. It is amazing. So that's what I'm going to be eating today with Cloud. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave two recipes in the comments for you and the recipes are going to be for six enchiladas or 12 and also friends keep on requesting you guys requested for me to keep bringing enchiladas and I have quite a list of enchiladas for you and by comments she means description area if you are asking for this uh, in Mexico or anywhere it's not going to happen you guys know that I bring you views original recipes and combinations and I'm just out there like that <laughs> Thank you guys for loving me. Thank you for being out there. <laughs> I was going to say, it's too much corn. It's really not. And this is great all year long. You know when you get all that corn for like 12 for a dollar? Yes. During the summertime, it's going to be perfect for that too. Mm -hmm. Nos vamos. It's time to eat. Mm -hmm. All right. We love you guys. Take care of one another. Be Bye. This day. is really, I'm in the zone. <laughs> I like when you're being corny and cheesy. You know, this dish is very <laughs> me. This is so me. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to make a quick and easy chicken stew and make sure to stick around to the end so that I can show you how to make this recipe comfortable for your home. I have cubed chicken here. Add your black pepper chicken bouillon, and a generous amount of garlic. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Next comes the fun part. We are gonna mix all our ingredients. And set to the side. Set your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil, enough to coat your pan. On this plate I have chile, tomate, cebolla, and for those of you that don't speak Spanish, we have some onion, an Anaheim pepper, and a tomato. Go ahead and add all these ingredients to your pan. We love to hear that sizzle. 
Mix all your ingredients into that delicious olive oil and we're gonna continue to cook for about three to four minutes. We want our onions translucent and our tomatoes nice and soft. After four to five minutes, you're gonna add your mushrooms. And place your temperature on a medium low heat. Continue to cook for another four to six minutes. After four minutes, add your ground cumin, chili powder, marjoram, and your Mexican oregano. Raise your temperature to a medium heat right before you add your pieces of chicken. Before you start stirring everything around with the chicken, continue to cook for two more minutes. After two minutes, combine all your ingredients. Start stirring. Stir it up, amigos. Add your water. Make sure to caress the bottom of your pan with that spoon so we can get all those crusty flavors to come into that delicious broth we're starting to develop. Add your half and half. For this next ingredient, you can use yogurt, you can use Mexican crema. Today I'm using the Lala Mexican sour cream. Remember to make it comfortable for your home. Butter. Place your pan on a medium low heat and continue to combine your ingredients. Once you've combined all your ingredients, you want to taste the broth that you have. And remember, you want to take a light hand if you're going to be adding a little bit more chicken bouillon or some salt for me. All I need is just a tad bit more of salt. And the addition that I'm making is about one fourth teaspoon. But as always, you can find the recipe in the description area. Yes, friends, all of our uh, exact measurements are in the description area. They're starter recipe so that you can make it comfortable for your home. And what that means, if you like more oregano, add more oregano. If you like more chili powder, add that. It's your house. You have to do whatever you want and what your family likes. Continue to cook on a low heat for five more minutes. Go ahead and turn your burner off. divine but it doesn't stop here okay for those of you that like spice or more of a chili flavor you want to add a serrano or a jalapeno just combine it in here okay it makes me so happy you can take it out you can serve your family right before you add the jalapeno you can serve the kids and if you like spice and nobody else does then you can add your little jalapeno in there but it's not so little and our final touch is cilantro to taste. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to have it, but I definitely prefer it. Combine all your ingredients and we're ready to serve. And boom, done amigos. Who's ready for a taste? Okay friends, now for those of you that wanna keep this light and you don't want the rice, it's okay. I'm really into eating uh, stews or guisados with lettuce, and that's my mom's style. She would always uh, serve it and always have a bowl of lettuce on the side for us to grab like if it was a tortilla. So just tear some of your lettuce, place it in your plate. A little more sauce? Yes, thank you for accommodating me. <laughs> That's what you get for not eating your carrots yesterday. <laughs> you get no rice. I ate some today. <laughs> <laughs> Say ah. It's over. It's over. You do know that he loves to eat too. I am glad he likes to eat. Wow. <laughs> well, some people just eat to live. He loves food. Mm. Yeah, girl, you threw yourself with this recipe. <laughs> People are gonna say, Cloud's always hyping them up. No, because they're really that good. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. This is so good. You know, I love adding the jalapeno or your chili pepper at the end. 
because it's a subtle spice and it's flavorful. You're not boiling everything with that spice, but if you if you want that spice, start with that chili from the beginning. She said bring it. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like, you know when that gravy hits that rice? I do know that feeling. It's so comforting. It is. It's magic. It's almost as good as a day on the beach. Hint, hint. Or in the mountain. That's another hint. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'll take you there. I mean, wow. You know, I'm still with this that I don't want to keep my burners or my stove on for too long. So you can get this recipe done within 30 minutes. That's right. Mm. Ooh, I love the crunch of the jalapeno. No, no puedo. <laughs> I can't stop. Don't do mm. it. I can't stop. Mm. Mm. I can't stop. <laughs> this is so good. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. As long as they're happy tears. Uh -huh. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. This is like an Ashanti song, girl. You just say baby, baby, baby the whole time because it's going to be delicious. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Amigos, you all know that I've been transforming these recipes to make them quick and easy for busy parents, single mamas. I am too busy to cook, it's getting too hot. Well, this is no exception. This recipe is gonna be quick and easy, full of flavor, so I hope you guys like steak and spaghetti. You're gonna need your favorite cut of steak or whatever's on sale. Today, I'm gonna be using ribeye, but this works great with cube steak, uh, New York steak, your favorite steak, it's gonna work. What you wanna do is you wanna add a little bit of salt, and by a little, I mean, I mean season it well, okay? We want that salt content, especially if you have a good cut of steak, but if you don't have, you know, such a great cut of steak, that's okay. You can use a little bit of chicken bouillon to sprinkle over instead of the salt, and it's gonna enhance the flavor of your delicious, juicy steak. Make sure to season it on both sides. Once you add your desired amount of seasoning, just come in and tap it gently. Give it a little gentle, suavecito touch, okay? And don't, don't move your salt to the side yet. We are gonna need the salt to salt our water for our spaghetti, and we're gonna warm buffet this steak. If you guys don't know what that is, make sure to stick around till I'm done cooking the steak. I know you guys see a bottle and you get excited, but amigos, use your favorite oil. Today I'm gonna to use olive oil. Cloud, you cannot chug this. She is acting like she's chugging it, guys. <laughs> Ignore her. You'll need some chopped garlic, and if you can see, I just chopped it up really chunky because I wanna bite into it. Mm -mm -mm. And if you chop it up really fine, it's something- It's called minced tend... garlic. Minced garlic. No, no? It's, it's this is not minced garlic. What is that called? It's a chunkier, it's Steph's garlic. Oh my gosh. She wants to argue today. Out of all no, things. I don't. It looks minced <laughs> from back here. You did a good job. I just. I coarsely chopped it. Nice. Oh, ho, 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 I'm being tested. And some thinly, here we go. Go ahead, come for me. Ooh. Some thinly chopped onions or sliced onions. I'm bad. impressed. You okay. did so good. Thank you. You are going to need some butter, and that's all we're going to need for our steak. Make sure you have your uh, cast iron on. Warm it up at least three minutes by the time we get there. Today, I'm going to be making my mother's spaghetti, which is our family favorite. You're going to need some spaghetti your favorite Parmesan, Mexican oregano, chicken bouillon, butter. Wow, I'm, I'm going in here just sneaking in like I'm gonna go into the Snakes concert. Snakes and ladders, snakes and ladders. <laughs> and some tomato sauce, amigos. Now that we have this set, let's go ahead and get started on boiling our pasta. To your pot of boiling water, add some salt. And some salt, I just went in like this, and then I dropped it like it was hot. Ooh. You guys can break your pasta, but our family likes to slurp it. I mean, my babies are half Korean. And who doesn't love noodles? <laughs> noodles, pasta, anything comforting and delicious like that. So just try to get the noodles wet here. Yes, Cloud, just get the noodles wet. <laughs> 
Get it them was all awkward, nice. awkward silence for a moment. You were in the zone. <laughs> it's because I'm hungry. I've been so hungry. So, so hungry, you guys. Me too. Forgive me for what I say going forward because I'm really, really hungry. Go ahead and place the lid and continue to boil. Make sure to follow the instructions on your packet. Amigos, I want you to pay attention. This pan has been warming up for three to four minutes on a medium high. I currently have it on a medium heat, but if you live in an apartment or a small area, make sure to bring out the fan, get ready to crack that door because if this smoke sets the alarm, it's gonna be okay because this steak is gonna be that good. So go ahead and add your desired amount of oil, which is about one and a half tablespoons. So you can use olive oil, canola oil, and that oil is gonna prevent our butter from burning when we add it. It's gonna get loud, so just place your steak and don't move it till I tell you. 